All right, right off the bat, we're going to have a little bit of fun here. I'm going to post you, oops, let me get this description real quick. So as soon as I'm able to go and edit this video, I'm going to put this in the description, but for now I'm going to post it in the chat. So check out the chat for, uh, let's see. There it is. Share, get shareable link, copy link. Check out the chat for that link. You can download the skull file, the apinator file that I'm going to be using. And what we're going to end up doing is, if you download the file, and you can follow along while I'm going through here. In fact, let me go ahead and launch Substance Painter. All right, we're going to launch. Um, download file, you can follow along. I'm going to do the Substance Painter, uh, some very quick Substance Painter stuff up front. And then if you go onto Twitter and you tweet the result at me, at PavMike, and do the hashtag NVIDIARTX, um, I'm going to put you in a pool for a, a free year of Substance Painter. So, and then uh, I'm going to... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my wife choose the winner. I'll act as a, uh, in a support role, but I'll let her choose. I was completely unbiased, but um, she's finally back from TES. And uh, so I think it'll be, I think that'll be fun. I think you guys are going to kick out of it. And uh, it should be fun to kind of go through and do that. So having said all that, let's go into Substance Painter real quick. So basically when you download that file, let me go ahead and I'll download it right along with you. Let's see, streaming, yep, recording, nope, I forgot to throw everything on my desktop here. Uh, and the reason I did that is uh, we'll talk about performance in a bit. So I'm going to go over here to my files, and you're going to end up with something like this. You're going to have an FBX and a bunch of PNGs in there. Uh, so super easy, you can actually just drag that FBX in here, but if you want to go to File, New, and go in here to Select, and grab that FBX, and then go in here to Add, and grab all of those files here. And then make sure you take, uh, change this normal map format from a uh, DirectX to OpenGL. Uh, that's just what I export it as. Um, that basically just flips the Y channel, uh, the green channel in your normal map, so that looks correct. And then if it, even if you don't remember to do this, you can fix that later. Uh, but uh, okay, I think that's all we need. Uh, if you, well, I guess you're gonna, uh, we'll skip that. Just okay. <laughs> We're just gonna be rendering the array and stuff like that. Uh, so once you've done that, you already have a skull ready to go. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna file, uh, save as, and uh, yeah, we'll just throw it in here, and we'll call this demo test. I'm going to save our SPP file. Uh, if you don't have Substance Painter yet, oh, if you're new to the, the Substance game, no biggie. You can go to here, you can try it for free, you can download it, uh, give it a whirl, and um, like I said, you can have fun right along with us. So, we have this object here, and I'm going to go really quickly how I did the texturing, uh, if you've been uh, on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, uh, how to just make a really quick Terminator head. And uh, I, I want to say there's there's some cheats involved. It's not really cheating. It's just uh, working smarter, not harder, I suppose. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're basically going to texture the whole thing real quick. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go over here where it says Substance Share Website. And if you go in there and you log in, uh, yeah, I think you do have to log in. Uh, you can upload files. I was going to put this skull file up on the meshes here, uh, but I think it was oversized a little bit or something. Um, but uh, if you want, actually, if you want to play with this old one, I did this uh, DC FPS female. You could download this and go ahead and texture this up if you want. Eventually, this will be in Substance Share. If you've been following along with them, uh, let me see if I have a uh, example of this. Let me just load this up. Uh, they're they're going to be updating this whole website. Uh, soon. It's going to have a lot of really cool features. You'll be able to like uh, tumble around uh, 3D models and uh, automatically preview and do exposed parameters on the materials and stuff. It's going to be really, really neat. Um, but for now, this is what the website is. And why I'm going here is if you do a search for T800, uh, you see I did a search earlier for basketball. I didn't find anything, so I had to uh, that, that on my Twitter too. Uh, there's a metal. If you don't see that, you can just go down here to Smart uh, materials here and it's right here. It's this right here at the top T100 metal. So you can go grab this, go ahead and download it, and then I'll go ahead and go download your download files here. Let's go to show in folder, and that's going to be a, a T800 metal SPM. So you're going to see uh, right here uh, there's a, SP, uh, a SPSM, sorry, and if you just drag that right into this shelf right here, um, I guess we can go ahead and do it again. 
It's going to say, okay, how, how do you want to bring this in? Uh, it's going to automatically say it's going to be a smart material. And you're going to have to tell it, do I only want to use this for my current, uh, while I have Painter open? Or do I want to use it while I'm working on my final demo test? Or do I want to always have access to it? I, this is the kind of thing where I probably want to maybe use this again. So I'm going to say uh, choose shelf and then uh, hit uh, import. And it'll go ahead and import right here into your smart materials. It'll go ahead and select the smart material tab right here. And if your windows are different than mine, you can just go up here to viewport, or I'm sorry, window, reset UI, and then I'll reset it. And then you can scroll down, and you're going to see you have a T800. Oops, it's right behind my banner there. Let me scooch this up. Uh, oh, I can't make it roll any further. Actually, I can just go ahead and undock this. So uh, the thing about this interface here, uh, very, very customizable. I can drag and drop this pretty much anywhere. And uh, you're good to go. In fact, uh, you can you can kill all these windows if you want to, and uh, work very very minimalistic. And there's ways to get around that. Um, but basically, you can take the T800 metal and you can uh, drag it right onto your texture here. Now, before I do that, uh, let's talk about this interface. Like I said before, you can go ahead and just kill uh, everything in here if you want, and you have access to them uh, over here. So if you are more comfortable working like you know very very large in your uh, screen here. Uh, feel free to, you know, kill all these windows and then just go over here. In fact, uh, while you're doing anything, like if I have a layer uh, selected and I'm kind of painting on it, um, it'll go ahead and go, hey, you know what? If you right-click in your interface, you're probably going to be using brushes. So it'll give you fast access and you even have these icons right here. So you have fast access to brushes while you're painting and stuff like that. Um, but for me and for you guys, we'll go ahead and say uh, Window Reset UI. We'll just kind of work um kind of defaulty for a bit so uh okay so now i have different texture sets on here what does that mean so i've got an eyes matte and iris matte skull matte teeth matte you can double click these and rename them any anything you want because when you go to export uh, this might be driving what your textures are name if i go over here to file export textures is control shift e um you're gonna see and I go in here in my configuration. If I'm going to export this to, like, say, V-Ray or something, it's going to have uh, the mesh name and the texture set and then the views. So if you want the texture set, this little variable right here, to be named anything in particular, uh, just rename the texture set to whatever you want. Uh, but I'll go ahead and leave that alone for now. And we're basically going to have the skull uh, mat selected. If I do one, it'll go ahead and isolate this. Uh, we'll start with skull because it's the most obvious thing to kind of play around with. And we'll go ahead and turn everything else back on. So again, this T800 metal, I'm just gonna drag it right onto my layer. You can actually just drag it right onto the mesh if you want to. Um, but I figured just having this over here would make sense. Uh, this little layer right here is paintable. Uh, if you, this is a, so it's a fill layer and that's like a little paintable layer. Um, we can probably just delete that. So let's hit that little trash can. And there we go, we have a Terminator. Now, uh, I also want the eyeballs to be painted or to be textured with the same material here. So what I'm gonna do, instead of going into the eyes, uh, or I can hold down Control Alt, and when I do that, you're gonna see uh, in this little area right here, a uh, little cheat sheet uh, for your hotkeys. You're gonna see if I right click here, it's gonna select that texture set. So I can go back to the skull, and then I can start texturing on the skull, uh, and then I can go right to the eyeballs again and start texturing on the uh, eyeballs. And so I'm gonna go back to the skull here, and instead of you know dragging and dropping this smart material and what, what i mean by smart material is it's going through here and it's looking at your base mesh maps which is all these things we loaded in so your normal map here your world space normal it's utilizing all of these maps to tell this material where to put stuff uh, for example this ambient occlusion here if you're going to and we can actually look at these if you go to our textures if i roll over my skull AO here, you're going to see where it's kind of recessed and where light doesn't really get into it, uh, it's darker. So if you're going to put a dirt on here, probably your dirt's going to settle in those recessed areas. So it's using that type of, and, and over here on the curvature, if you're going to scratch the edge of something, you're going to use a curvature map uh, to determine where those scratches are going to end up on your mesh. So basically these mesh maps here are driving what is in this um, smart material, and we'll make our own smart material as we go further along. Uh, but, long story short, I want this T100 metal to be on the eyes mat, and I don't want to go in the eyes mat and just drag that smart material um, right on there. Because if I ever make a change to this, um, to the original, it's not going to update on the eyeball. However, in the skull, I can right-click this, and I can say, initiate across, instantiate across texture sets. And I'm going to put this, I'm going to uncheck 
iris, we don't want it on there. I'm gonna check teeth, we don't want that on our teeth. Uh, but for the eyes we do, so I'm gonna hit OK. It's going to put a, if I go to the eyes here, you're gonna see a little T800 uh, T metal instance. And you can actually click on this thing here and you'll see, oh, it's from the, the parent is from skull and now it's on the eye. So if I ever want to make a change to this, um, I can just go to the skull. I can just click right here and now I'm on the skull texture set. So for instance, if I want to go through here and be like, you know what, this is pretty sweet, uh, especially for a drag and drop nearly done. But I'm going to go to this bottom fill layer here and I'm going to go down here to metal color and I'm going to darken this up a little bit. And, uh, you know, a reference is always a good thing. So depending on what era of Terminator you're trying to hit, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up uh, Quadro, and uh, you're not going to be able to see this because it's way off my screen. I'm, I'm working in the middle of a very, very large screen here. So I'm going to go ahead and open some reference here. Uh, I think it's on my desktop, yes. And we got some reference, we got some Gorilla reference. If you saw Tuesday's live stream, I did a Pixelogix channel, it's on my YouTube channel now. Um, you can see the making of the Gorilla, and then actually the making of the ZBrush skull that we're using this uh, for. I'm going to grab the Terminator reference. I mean, by, by grab Terminator reference, if I do a screenshot here, this is what my screen looks like now. Give or take. Let's see, open an image editor. So if you were looking at my monitor here, Oops. Let me squish this down. Uh, we'll have two monitors stacked on top of each other. Uh, but if you were looking at them, you would basically see me uh, working in ZBrush, and I've got all this reference around me. And the cool thing about Quadro is um, I don't have to, it's not, I, it's not limited to uh, just a small area of my, let me make sure that, um, you guys can see everything. Yeah, okay, you're good. Um, you don't have to make sure that you're in like a windowed area and you have to zoom in and around a bunch of things in a single window. This is just scattered all over. So I can go through here and grab this one. I can control drag out a copy of this. I can go through here. I can flip it vertically. I can flip it horizontally. Uh, I can rotate if I want to. Uh, and, I, and another cool thing is I can go through, and I demoed this last time in my last stream, I can go in here to transparency. I can hold down T and drag, and I can drop the transparency of it. You can also go like grayscale. If you only want to look at values, um, you can make it, uh, you can toggle everything to grayscale. You see toggle uh, grayscale right here. And that's just a grayscale version. Um, so a lot of really cool stuff you can do with this. But uh, what I'll do is you can, kind of like in the spotlight in ZBrush where you have reference overlaying on your object, you can go down here uh, to Quadro, go to settings, and you can say uh, lock image isn't always on top. Let me go ahead and show you that there. So you see lock images always on top, and uh, when you do that, it'll just kind of sit there, and then you can draw behind it. Uh, it actually saved my butt when I was doing uh, my video editing, where I was going through and I was kind of doing this the chalkboard writing on uh, a YouTube video for my build. And let me, sorry, I've got a bunch of stuff open right now. In fact, if you go to my YouTube channel, uh, if you see the update to my to my workstation here, uh, I did some drawing on the screen. And in order to tell where I was drawing, uh, what I did was I had I, I drew in Photoshop. I had Quadro overlaid where I needed to draw stuff. And then I went through and just drew, and I had OBS capture just me drawing and not my reference sitting on top. So very, very useful, but also useful if you want spotlight functionality uh, just at your fingertips. And also, the other cool thing is, Let's say I've got all this reference up, and I'm like, you know what? Uh, this is my just general Terminator reference. So do I want it to be like dark, um, this Dark Fate type Terminator? I don't want like this Terminator early version, Terminator 3 metal, or do I want, you know, classic? Uh, you see real cool rust in here, kind of that classic metal, like this called chromed out. It's kind of up to you, but... Um, that's just that kind of reference, but uh, for mature reference. But let's say, you know what? I want to sculpt just teeth. So what I'm going to do is I can go in here and I can kind of just squish this window down and I can just look at uh, everybody's teeth. So I'm going to go through here and grab all of these, oops, all of these images here. And again, we're just going to zoom in on all the teeth. And once I've done that, I can go through here and I can resave this uh, quadro file. I can go to save as, then I can save this as Terminator teeth reference. So now all I need to do is go to quadro and say, okay, open recent 
Terminator. That'll be all my Terminator heads. Uh, open recent teeth that'll go through and zoom in. So I'm just looking at all my teeth files. Um, so I can very quickly just kind of toggle and switch uh, through different uh, areas to look at in my reference. Uh, anyway, so we have this skull here and it's all textured up. We're feeling good about it. It's basically drag and drop. And we'll go more into like how you make a material and wear and tear and put stuff on there and do cool stuff. And we're going to do variants. Um, I would say if you're going to submit to, if you look at the bottom of your screen there, and if you're new, um, here is the... Oh, is there a... Let me see, is my... Cool, thanks everybody. <laughs> uh, you know what? I wish my voice sounded like Terminator. I might, I might drip, drip in my Arnold impression. And I say drip because Arnold has a very dry tone, and he also has kind of a wet, total recall tone. I'll explain the differences to that uh, as we progress. But uh, so we've got this all loaded up, and the button there you're gonna see download the skull file. That's gonna be this thing right here. Share, get shareable link, copy link, and just drag and drop this right in the painter. Follow along and um, pin it up. And uh, if you just do a Terminator skull, you're probably uh, not going to be very eye-catching because I've just done that. But, you know, make like a Stormtrooper variant or make like a, I don't know, think of something cool um, that could be a cool metallic uh, variant on here. But for now, uh, just going to be a quick, quick demo on the things that I was doing on like Facebook and Twitter earlier. Anyway, so we've got all of this and let's go ahead and beef these eyeballs up. So I'm going to hold down Control alt and tap. And this is going to be our iris mat. Uh, if we go in here, this is going to be a little bit different than when I was on doing my previous stream. And we'll go into another file. This is basically laid out. If I go over here to 2D, and I was 2D only, you're going to see everything's laid out here. Um, and also, if we go over here, we'll control shift, right click here. Here's my entire skull completely laid out. Um, there's actually auto UVs in Painter now. We'll talk about that later too. But. I have two two variants of this file. One is where it's stacked, and I have things that are mir uh, mirrored uh, and then overlaid on top of each other to save texel density, uh, just to be a little bit more optimized. And then this one's completely laid out, so you can just go go nuts on what you want to texture on here. Uh, but the so, if, for instance, on this iris mat, you can have one eye that's green and one eye that's red, or one eye that's kind of dim and one eye that's bright. Um, I just I just figured that'd be a little bit funner to play with as opposed to having the irises stacked on top of each other in the middle here, um, which you can do cool stuff with if you have that set up that way. Uh, and it's also cheaper. You know, you get more texel density uh, for the for the um, resolution, but um, it comes with the cost of not being able to do things uh, differently. So basically what we're going to do here is we're going to say, I need this. Let's go back here to uh, 3D and 2D. I need to have... A glowing eyeball in the middle. So I'm going to go over here and we're going to add a fill layer. I like to use fill layers. You can just straight up paint emissive and base color all at once using just a regular layer like this one. Uh, but I like using fill layers because they're a lot more flexible and a lot less destructive. Uh, we are going to be a little bit destructive because we are going to be painting a mask. So it's not going to be like totally drag and drop, but um, it's, it's still pretty cool. So we'll go ahead and call this um, color emissive. And this one, um, we could always, I always like to have maybe a base, uh, like a catch-all. And this catch-all in particular is going to be a uh, base color. Well, let's make this a very dark color. And uh, if we turn this off, you're going to see this is what we're getting. And we can go through here and you can make it very rough or very, uh, it's not very, you can make it super shiny or not very shiny, depending on if it's more towards the black, it's going to make it very shiny. Um, over here, it's going to make it a little bit rougher. That I'm not so worried about. This is going to be a catch-all for the base. In fact, you know what? I am going to make it rougher. And then uniform color, I go down here and I can make this. Let's make it black. And then over here, I'm going to turn on color and emissive. And in this one, I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to turn off everything except color and emissive. Except, wait, I have an emissive channel. So I got to go over to the texture settings. And this is where um, normally maps would be loaded in here, but it's just an iris. Uh, there's, not, there's no normal map information I wanted baked into here. Uh, I could have baked in like this. Oh, let me see if I get a good example. There we go. I could have baked in like these little cross hatchy type things, um, but that's destructive and I can just do it in the texture so I can do it non-destructively and play around with it. So I didn't want to bake that into the high res. You got to kind of pick and choose. Even some of this stuff where I went through and I like put these little holes 
or these little divots in the mesh, all of that could have been done. And you can do this later too. You can do this in the uh, file itself in the high res, or I'm sorry, in the texture and make it non-destructive and play around with height and stuff while you go. Um, but in this case, I didn't need to bake anything for iris. That's why there's no textures in here. But long story short, we're going to go up here to plus and we're going to go in here to emissive. And uh, so now we have an extra emissive channel on here. So now you have color and I can turn on emissive. So for this, I'm going to turn on the base color is going to be maybe just a red-ish. And then the emissive color is going to be a nice bright red. And now that we have these, um, so it's, it's still a little bit meh, because uh, basically when you're looking at these heads, it's like it starts bright and then it goes uh, darker as it gets out towards the rim. So we can go ahead and do that as well. How we can do that is we can go in here and add a, uh, let's add a black mask. So now the emissive doesn't show up anywhere. So you can go through here and you can uh, kind of make your brush, so go to brushes. I think I just have like the basic hard. And then you can hold down control. And again, when you hold down control or alt or control and alt or shift, it'll give you a little cheat sheet. So you're going to see if I hold down control and drag down, it's going to change the hardness of brush. And then left and right is the size. Uh, and if you just left click, it'll rotate, but the alpha is just round, so you're not going to see much. Uh, but we can go through here and we can see, you know what? I want this to be painted white. If you want to see, and you can just right click because context sensitive. You can go down here and you're painting grayscale. You can paint black, which is just going to be painting black on a black mask, or white, which can be painting white on a black mask. When I do that, it's going to show whatever this fill layer has um, through. And since this one's on top, it's going to be on top of my base color. So we can go through here and we just click, and that'll go ahead and show where that is. You can also go into your 2D if you want to, and you can just click uh, right in here. So we'll just go through in our 2D view. These are just your UVs, by the way. And uh, there you go. So now we have our uh, iris. Again, we, we this this allows us to maybe have this one be a little bit more dim. Um, if we wanted to, like, maybe drop our flow down, you can actually put on uh, right, right in here the pressure sensitivity. I'm using a mouse to kind of click in here, not my tablet right now. But so you can make this one a little bit more dim if you want to. But we'll go ahead and keep them the same-ish. We can always change it later as we want to. Uh, for example, if you wanted to, like, put up a uh, paint, just right-click and uh, add a paint layer. Uh, and this is, again, a little bit more or less destructive. And then if I hit X, that's going to change it to black. It's basically going to go from white to black over here. Or you can just dra drag that slider down to a darker value. And then um, we can just control drag, make that harder. We can just knock that down uh, a little bit. Actually, let's make it paint black on here. Uh, or you can just kind of paint black. I don't know. You can you can uh, erase this if you want to. <laughs> Let's grab our uh, color opacity. We can just paint this completely out, and then we can restamp something a little bit softer in here. There we go. Now we got a dim eyeball. Sorry, long explanation for something, but not a huge payoff. That's okay. Now we can still control the fall off non-destructively. Actually, I want to get rid of that paint. Uh, we can just control this fall off uh, non-destructively. Uh, and my stat one will show you a different technique. But what you can do in here is you can go in here, right click and add a levels and now with this levels over here you can go through and you don't have to worry about like oh it goes with my base color my roughness uh it's just going to a mask so it's just one thing it's going to so you can go through here and you can um just click and drag these so you go through and be like oh let's change that contrast you can see as i'm doing that i'm getting a, a, a better dilation on the eyeball so you can go through and you can kind of tweak that a little bit so now we have a missive here and we have color and oh, here's the other thing too. So right now, um, it's just showing uh, right on top of this base layer. And I think we're in good shape. We can go in here to base color and emissive. And if I ever want to change any of these values, like go over here to emissive and just like play around. I want it to be brighter or darker. I want it to actually be blue emissive. I can certainly do that. Uh, we'll go ahead and keep it classic. So we can go ahead and change that. So that's uh, a little bit of this. Now, we are missing one thing. And that is, I wish I could grab this one. I wonder where it's up there. There we go. Uh, so if I zoom in here, you're going to see we have these little, um, well, those, it's like little uh, pyramid pebbles on here. And that's really easy uh, to do in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do another fill layer. And this fill layer is going to block everything. And I just want to change the height, uh, the bumpiness of what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to go in here and we're going to say, just give me the height channel. And in the height channel, I'm going to go, uh, you can go in here to procedural or you can just go to all and just do a search for tile or you can go right in here to the height and you can just do a search for tile 
And we're going to grab just this tile generator here. And we're going to go down and we're going to change this from brick to pyramid. Uh, and then when we go in here, you can see now we're getting a little pyramid tile in here. And the fill layer here, and we can go down. If you want to, it looks empty, but if you go to the height, you're going to see this is the uh, what's changing. Let's go ahead and go back to just our 3D view. There we go. Uh, so we got our fill layer here, and we can call this. Just double click it, name it height, and go back to base color here. And these, this will drop down to the channels that you're affecting. So if I wanted to make this uh, height from linear dodge a multiplier or something, that's what I would need to do. But we'll just go ahead and keep that by default. And then we go through here on this base. Actually, since this is controlling my roughness, I can go through here and I can actually kind of make it a little bit shinier. And now I'm kind of getting a little bit of a plastic look. And you can also go up here and you can say take the scale. Oops, not the base. On the height, and you can you can uh, see how many times it tiles. If you hold on shift, it'll actually give you a little bit of a smoother, uh, more precise drag. So let's say that looks about right. And then we'll go ahead and we'll make that, we'll pop that um, base roughness down just a little bit. It looks a little bit intense. There we go. So now uh, we can make this a little bit prettier in our viewport. We can go up here to our display and we can go to shadows. And this is going to be important when we start doing subsurface scattering on those teeth. You're really going to want these shadows on. Uh, let's, we can go ahead and do like intensive shadows, no big deal. Got plenty of horsepower, and you can also drop the shadow intensity down a little bit if you want to. Um, also, you can go into the shader and you can like do the quality to low, medium, high, or whatever you want to. I'm not sure how much of a difference that really makes. Um, but we'll go ahead and just keep this uh, as is. And just for fun, uh, if you wanted to start doing beauty renders right now, uh, hop into this little button right here, and this goes into your eye ray renderer, and we'll let that warm up. And a very quick warm up. And we can go through here. We can change this. We can go in here to a uh, little little sunny area here. You can shift right click uh, to change uh, to rotate your environment map here. Uh, let's see if there's a cool one. A little street view. And you don't want to see the street view. Let's go ahead and grab uh, the shipyard here. So here's here's the shipyard that we're using. If you just want to see a color behind it and not just necessarily the environment map, uh, you can go through here. To where the dome is hit clear color and then you can make this yeah, a little bit darker we'll make him pop a little bit and you see how quick this renders uh so basically if you go in here to edit settings and you scroll down um first of all when we're baking we need to have uh, enable ggp ray tracing if you have an rtx card we'll get more into the uh, this in a bit uh but if you have an rtx card it's going to use um the ray tracing cores to render your a lot of these maps faster like your AO map and curvature map they're going to be like almost instantaneous even for 4k maps which again I'll show you in a bit um, but make sure if you have an RTX card you definitely have that enabled it's enabled by default here's the enable automatic UV unwrapping so when you drag something in with no UVs it'll go ahead and wrap it for you and then down here under IRA hardware we can see we have the uh, I'm using my GeForce RTX 2080 Ti and then also my CPU uh, to do some rendering if we get control shift escape we can go in here to the performance, and right now nothing's nothing's working. Um, I'm using the AMD Ryzen Fitter Pro 3970X. If you go to that workstation video we were looking at earlier, let's see if I still got that here. I guess not. Uh, if you go to that workstation video, you can see a little bit more information. And the and the cool thing, I'll go ahead and link you guys to this if you want it. Let's see, share, copy. So you can check this video out. Oh yeah, that's a uh, Quadro. So um, if you want to download the reference viewer, the one you want is 0 .11, 0 0.11. Uh, you can get it for free on Gumroad. I think that's got the latest one, and um, really, really cool, cool to use. I like it. I saved my butt several times over. Um, it's QA Duro. And then uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, the workstation stuff. You know, share copy. So this is going to explain a little bit more about the specific hardware. So basically we got on our uh, on our motherboard here, we've got, that's my old motherboard. So we've got uh, NVMe PCIe Gen 4 uh, hard drive and that I'm running off. I just have one, which is my C drive right now, but I'm going to have to, my old, my old drives are SATA drives, so I've got all those cords and cables and stuff going to my SATA drives. But the NVMe drives plug right into uh, your motherboard. Much, much faster read and write speeds. Uh, my, my workstation boots up like a laptop now. It's pretty sweet. I like it. Uh, but in conjunction with that, you also have, I have faster RAM, so I have 3600 speed RAM. 
Um, and then I also have uh, the new motherboard, which is again is a PCIe Gen 4. So everything is faster. And then on the new uh, Threadripper, we have uh, more faster memory access, uh, direct direct access from the RAM to the core and stuff like that. So everything is just sped up and faster and better. And um, everything's taking advantage of that. So having that uh, available to me really speeds things up. Uh, and so for the NVIDIA card here, if we go, if you want to see, if you're ever looking at your card and you're like, what's going on? What's it using? Sometimes we go down here, like we'll change this copy to uh, CUDA cores. And then that's where the real work's happening. Things that require CUDA cores to run, uh, this is where you're going to see uh, that performance hit. Now, you're going to see nothing's really happening at all. And that's because it finished rendering. Um, it was pretty quick. So let's go back to our painter file here. Um, where did it go? Oh, there it is. Uh, so anyway, just going through my settings here. So it finished rendering. So we don't want it to finish. We want to continue just having this thing render continuously. Um, so we're going to go here to your shady settings, display settings here. And here, shader settings, texture set settings. Uh, what am I looking for here? Here we go. Uh, so the renderer settings, we can go in here and you're going to say min sample is five, max samples is a thousand. That's not nearly enough. I'm going to crank it up, crank it up, max time, crank it up. And then it's going to say continue rendering. Um, the resolution it's rendering at is 1454 by 991. You can override this. You can see override viewport resolution and you can render out 2K, 4K, whatever you want to do. You can even save it straight to your art station from here if you want to. Uh, but you're going to see the render is going to kick in. And then um, as I move this thing around, uh, it's going to kick off kind of a new render. It starts it starts kind of blurry, and then it gets uh, resed in, and then you can see you know, all the CPUs kicking in, and then the GPU, like I said, see these CUDA cores light up um, that Iris is using. So very cool, renders very fast. Now we're not done with the teeth yet, so let's hop out of IRA real quick. And we'll add some stuff for scattering to these teeth. Now if I go to the teeth and I click one, you're going to see I did cap these teeth off. Um, I was able to get subsurface scattering to work in IRA without capping it. I read some documentation that said it might be a good idea to cap things that are glass or subsurface scattering. So I did. Um, but you can play around with that and see if that's totally necessary. But we've got these teeth here. And let's go ahead and talk about material instances. We don't really need to do it in this case. It doesn't... Oh, is that not true? If you, if you wanted to do opacity, uh, you would need a new material instance. So uh, let's say we wanted to make these eyes kind of uh, translucent or opaque. Or transparent should say. So control right click these eyeballs. You can go in here and instead of just using the main shader material instance, you can drop this down and you can say new shader instance. Uh, now we just go into our shader settings. We can name this um, name it Irish shader if we want to. And then you'll be able to, oh yeah, save often. File, save. It'll auto-save for you. Uh, and also it'll do incremental um, auto-saves as well. Um, but basically what we're doing is we're giving this a new material instance. So now this iris is using an iris shader. So that means I can go in here to the shader settings and say, I don't want PBR metal rough. I need uh, the ability to use an opacity channel to make this transparent in certain areas. So we can do this PBR metal rough with alpha blending. So I can choose that. And now this is using a different shader. Uh, so now with that, I can go in this iris mat. I can go texture set settings, click plus, and we can do, what am I looking for here? Opacity. Now we have an opacity channel. So if I go down here, uh, well, we need to put a layer in here. So let's put another fill layer in here. We'll say this is going to control just my opacity. Now you don't have to split everything out like, oh, I want one for height and one for roughness. You don't have to do that. You can. It's all packed into one channel here. Um, but for demo purposes, sometimes it's interesting to kind of be able to layer these things differently. If you wanted to like have a roughness that you tiled, in fact, let's just do that real quick. We'll make a new layer here roughness and in this roughness here we'll turn off everything but roughness and then we'll click here and we'll just type in um, grunge actually let's let's get rid of this now we can go through here uh, can we just do grunge there we go the resources grunge you can go through here and you can scroll through grunge or you can go over here to this tab and drag and drop a grunge uh, if you hover over it that'll give you a little bit of a bigger preview so if you wanted, let's look for, like, is there like a scratches and grunge? Let's look for scratches. Let's look for like something. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, grunge pretty scratchy. So I'm going to just drag this right into my roughness here. And if I want to see this, if I hit B, 
that's going to cycle through my mesh maps. So this is going to say, oh, here's my AO, here's my normal map, here's my world space normal map. Uh, if I hit C, that's going to cycle through my channels. Uh, and if you just click down here, you can see here's single channel and then mesh maps. You just click them in here. So if we go just to the roughness map, you can see this is the roughness um, that we have on our object. And we're just looking right at this iris here. So let's zoom in here. And now if I turn this roughness off, that's our roughness. If I turn it on, that's our new roughness. So I can go up here and I can change the scale to kind of change that roughness scale here. I can even do an offset or rotation uh, if you want to. And this is going to control what's dry and what's shiny on our object, basically. Uh, so if we go through here and I hit M, as in Michael Pavlovich, that's going to dictate uh, my roughness a little bit. If we turn up the height, you can probably see, little, see how it's kind of a little bit grimy now on that iris. Pretty sweet. Uh, so another thing you can do is if you want to change the contrast of this, well, the other thing too is I can go through here and I can scale this separately. Now, if this roughness was built in to say the same thing as the height, as I change this overall scale and tiling, which you can also do in here, you can go to pattern and you can change it to tile more or less in the in the pattern here. Um, but sometimes that's not an option. So if I want to tile this or scale the UVs on this height differently than the roughness, I just have a different fill layer for it. Um, so now I can add roughness, I can scale it to whatever I want to. And also I can right click this, I can even add a levels to my roughness. So now I can go through here and I can say, uh, let's go back to our C for our roughness channel. And now this one, I do have to tell it, don't do levels on my base color, do levels on my roughness. So I can go through here and I can change the contrast. I can even invert this if I want to and change the contrast. So now it's going to be uh, mostly dry and now it's going to be kind of shininess is taken over. So you can kind of dial this in. If you want to see what you're actually doing, again, just hit M and that'll be uh, the overall result. Uh, and this roughness is just kind of be sitting right on top of, it's normal, it's set to normal here. So if we go, oops, if we go to roughness, and then you can see it's set to normal uh, blend mode. So now it's overriding this base, which has just a base roughness value. However, I can have this base roughness value sitting here, and I can go down to this, and I can say, you know what? I do want it grungy, but just, just a little taste of that grunginess. You can just drop that opacity down, or you can change the blend mode if you can set this to, like, multiply. Um, and now we hit C. You can see, okay, this is what the result we're getting. And then you can change the opacity on here. And then once we turn the height, it's just going to kind of obliterate that roughness, but that's okay. Uh, same thing with the height. If we check the height here, go down to the height channel, and then uh, just change this down. Our height is kind of, so you can kind of really just kind of dial in. If you don't want it super sharp, just dial that back just, just a tiny bit. But I'll get sharp. There we go. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk about material instances, got an iris shader, oh, we need to do the T, so control alt tap, and again, I don't need to make a new material instance for this, I don't think, I think the PDR just has, it has scattering built in, so we don't need to do anything special. So, how do we turn on something for scattering? We're going to make a new fill layer here, and again, we'll just have this control, the scattering, so we're going to go over here to, oh, well, there's three places we need to turn this on. Uh, number one, we need to, we don't have a scattering channel. So again, just like emissive, we have to go in here and hit and, uh, opacity. We can go in here and we can just turn on. Let me stop this video and playing. It's distracting me. Um, texture settings, we're going to go to the channel here and we're going to put on scattering. So now we have a scattering channel we can turn on. So I'm going to go ahead and turn everything off except for scattering. And then for scattering here, that's selected, we see we have uh, black, which is no scattering, and white, which is 100% scattering, and our teeth didn't change at all. So let's go in here to our display. Oh, actually, in our shader here, if you scroll down, you're going to see that subsurface scattering is already enabled, and it's already set to skin, uh, and you have a scale and a color you can play around with. You also have translucent. This is like if you want to do like marble or jade, I think. Um, skin actually works pretty well for the teeth. I'll just leave it on skin. And then in display, Scroll down and activate subsurface scattering. And then uh, this will be your sample. And as soon as you do that, it's going to be like, hey, subsurface scattering. And boy, it looks, that looks awful. No big deal. All we got to do is go back to our shader here and go down to our subsurface scattering and then drop that down. It's probably going to be like 0.1. It's a very small model. Uh, so 0.1 or maybe 0.2. Uh, 0.1 looks actually pretty good. And this is where you can go in here. Like if you don't want it red, you can change it. Maybe to a little bit more yellow, make it a little bit darker or lighter. Uh, and also having your shadows turned on, if you forgot where to do that in your display, activating your shadows makes a big difference. Like right now, it's like subsurface scattering is on, but you can't really tell. Uh, turn on your shadows and you'll really be able to see that white 
you can see like right here that really really cool subsurface scattering on there. So let's go ahead and finish these teeth out. Let's go in here to, and we can't really see those teeth all that well so let's go ahead and change even in here I can go to our environment map and we'll just change this back to our uh, what's that yeah the default where do you oh panorama there we go now you can see those teeth just fine so we're gonna we have the teeth mat we got scattering let's go ahead and delete that layer out of here although we could have kept that I uh, know this one I'm gonna turn off scattering I don't need to control scattering well here's another cool thing you can do in scattering if you go to your textures here you're going to see uh, thickness and thickness maps are one of those things that I believe uh, the RTX cores in your NVIDIA cards, uh, if you have an RTX card, um, is going to have those ray tracing cores that are going to make the baking of the who baking of the uh, thickness map even faster. And we'll we'll, we'll show that off uh, in a bit. But here's my teeth uh, thickness. So if I just drag that right on my scattering, that's going to control um, wherever it's white is going to again be more scattering. Wherever it's dark is going to be less scattering. If you want to change that at all, again, uh, right click. Uh, in your scattering and just add a levels and let's go through our channels again so here's uh where it's now we want to invert this we're going to go ahead and invert that so now oops that's inverting our base color invert our scattering channel there we go so now where it's white it's going to have more subsurface scattering and then where it's dark or thicker uh, it'll have less subsurface scattering um I'm, i didn't actually end up doing this but you can go through here and you can change that contrast on here and really kind of if you hit m you can see maybe um, the difference it's making. There you go. See that? Kind of controlling where that scattering is going. Uh, but in this case, I uh, didn't really need it. So we're just kill that levels, and then here it's going to hit that little X, and then we're just going to make this all uh, full, fully scattered. And then uh, just to kind of finish these teeth out real quick, we'll say this is a uh, base properties, and we're going to say you are. Maybe just kind of a kind of an off base yellowish. You can go in here and you can change the roughness. And remember, you can have this as kind of your base roughness, and or you can have a roughness channel or a roughness fill layer that just affects the roughness. And you can do the opacity, or you can just go in here. Let's go into grunges here. And let's look for a just a blobby blotchy. I don't work. Roughness here, or you can just dial in this roughness right in here, and that'll kind of break up. Uh, that roughness on there. And of course, you can scale it up if you want to see what you're actually doing. Uh, so you go into your roughness here, and this is the result we're getting. Yeah, I mean, it actually kind of works, um, but we can probably do a little bit better than that. Maybe just a straight up dirt. There we go. Look at that. Ooh, teeth. Now, uh, these are all pretty fake looking, although looking at some of my reference, I mean, these aren't all for the movies and stuff, these are just kind of found on the internet, so some of them do have teeth that just kind of look like this. Uh, we can do, uh, we can get a little bit more fancy than that. So we can go in here, instead of a fill layer, although this is less destructive, if you did a fill layer and you had white and a black mask and you just painted where it's white on teeth and then where it's blue in the teeth, uh, and then you can go in and, I'll show you that. So we're going to say this is teeth white and we just want to affect our base color on this one so we're just going to turn off everything but the color and then this is going to be let's go to the base color here right click add a black mask and now we just go through here I'm going to go to my brushes and you see we've got a bunch of different brush types and in fact if you go down here you're going to see there's a bunch of different PS brush types if you're ever in Photoshop let's load this up real quick and you're like, boy, I wish I had more brushes to do my cool paintings. Uh, that's my banner size. Let's do Control N for new, and we'll say, make this square. Uh, so we're in here, and we're painting. Uh, same thing, Photoshop. You hold down Alt and uh, what is that? Right click. Uh, you can change the brush size, then Alt and up and down. You can change uh, the opacity, and then you can kind of go in here and uh, paint. But you can also go into your brushes here, and you got a lot of cool brushes. You're going to see in here I have art markers. So I can go through here and I can click on art markers. How you get those, it's real easy. Just go into this little three little hamburger thing over here, and then do um, import brushes, or is that just brush settings? Brushes. I want to uh, get more brushes. I know that's in here somewhere. Give me a second. Get more brushes. That's going to take you to a website where you can get more brushes. And then you just basically uh, download these. You can just download any of these. I went ahead and downloaded um, art markers. 
and then we can go in here you see art markers abr you can um, go ahead and load those in here you can just say load brushes we'll go ahead and load your art markers in here and and in substance now you can go in here and you can just drag and drop artmarkers.abr right in here and it'll load up these uh, Photoshop brushes right into Painter. Very, very cool. So basically, I'm just going to look for uh, artistic. I was looking for something splotchy here. Work. That'll work. So we can go through here and we can just start painting um, on the black channel. And if you want to see what we're painting on the channel, I'll tap this channel here. You go through and you can kind of see um, where you're painting. Uh, hold down control and right click and you can go through and you can just paint where this mask is and then again um, just hit M to go back to material. So basically uh, I'm going to paint in just kind of white. It's going to be kind of yellowy along the inside. Oh, if you want to paint symmetrically you can go through here and just turn on this little symmetry line. Um, I was having trouble with this yesterday. Uh, no, it's fine. So you can go through there and you can paint across symmetry even if your UVs aren't symmetrical. There's even more options in here. You go to here, you can say uh, change the, if it's off axis, you can scoot it towards the middle. You can turn on show plane if you want to, um, but that's fine. You can even do radial symmetry if you want. Uh, very cool. And in here, you can actually, so we were doing, I don't know if I mentioned this. So here's the full preview. So if I uh, control and then just uh, tap with my tablet on my object, you see I can rotate that alpha. I can also go in here and I can say full, pre here's full preview. I can say brush outline, which is just the alpha outline, just like in Photoshop, and then crosshair. So that's a little bit more uh, precise. So again, just go through here, control, right click, and drag. And if you want to change the hardness, that's up and down. Size. And then um, I think by default now, uh, here's your brush settings. Here, by default, hardness is, you don't have to put this, if you're going to make your own brushes and stuff, uh, you don't have to build in hardness anymore. I think it's just automatic. Um, for brushes, or it will be. I'm not exactly sure on that, but uh, also we have flow. So if I crank this flow up, you're gonna see I paint uh, very, very harshly. And in fact, let's let's talk about this on the skull, just so I can demonstrate it real quick. So we've got a skull here, and I'm gonna do a fill layer, and this is just uh, just a white fill layer. And then on top of here, I'm just gonna start painting. I'm gonna do just a paint layer on top of this, and you're gonna see I can go through and I can paint white. Or I can go in here to my properties, and it's like, you know what, I want to paint, uh, I always choose red. Let's choose like a like a baby blue. And go through here and you can start painting. Uh, so you can go through, you can start painting, and we can turn on flow, uh, tablet pressure, and let's go ahead and drop that down. You can also do stroke opacity. You can drop that down, and now you can start painting. However, uh, you can also change your spacing so you can smooth that stroke out a little bit. Um, so while we're painting with our stroke opacity, or I'm sorry, our flow, uh, there's two different methods you can do with that. So let's drop that flow down even more. So right now it's very low. And as I go over my own strokes, it's kind of building up a little bit. You can also go into your settings here and you can go down to advanced blending and you can change this sample blending or stamps blending to lighten. So you can go through here and this will give you um, even more of like a hand painterly buildup. So if you wanted to kind of go through here and paint a little bit of blue and then let's go in here and change our base color to something greeny, go in here and paint some green. And then if you want to sample overlapping colors in here, you can hit P and then just tap. Now to go ahead and select any any channel that you're painting on, if you're painting roughness or metallicity or anything like that, it's gonna pick up all those properties. Um, in this case, we're just picking up color. And now we can kind of just go through and brush um, that color. And so, and again, that, that painterly kind of look, you're probably gonna get a uh, better results if you go in here to advanced blending and change that to, um, max uh, weight maximum for that I'll go ahead and kill that and kill that uh, save and we're gonna go back to our teeth there you go so again we got teeth fight we're painting on a mask and the reason I'm doing that is number one it's, it's a little bit less destructive let's drop our flow down a bit uh, a little bit less destructive and you can always go back and you can change, like, it's this, oh, this tooth is too white. Well, now i got to go in and paint over where everything I just painted uh, to make it less white. No, you don't. Just go back here to this layer here. And, in fact, like, the white areas, I want to be rougher. No problem. Just go in here, turn on roughness, and now um, those white areas here that's kind of shiny, you can go through here and you can know, you know what? No, I want the white areas to be 
rougher. But of course, I probably want it. Maybe you want it to be shinier. Um, also, you can go into the base color here and be like, you know, I want super white. Or I want them, I don't know, another color. You can just go through here and kind of dial in exactly, just tweak, tweak what you're looking for. Now you can, I think, technically tweak things on a paint layer. You can drop in, uh, you know, let's do a paint layer for this one. And we'll call this color break. Uh, if you just want to paint with color on a normal layer, just right click and turn off all the other channels. I don't want to paint roughness or hide or anything. Just paint with color, makes things simpler. Um, you make that color break up. And for color break up, let's actually, this is actually a pretty good color. Let's go ahead and make this just a slightly white blue. Towards the ends of teeth, that's a bit much. Let's drop the flow down. Um, towards the ends of the teeth, it can kind of get um, a little bit bluish. So just towards these caps here. Um, let's also turn this opacity down here a little bit. Uh, we can make these blue. Now you're going to see it. I'm painting them like bright baby blue. That's Again, that's a bit much. Um, but here, there's two things we can do. Number one, we can go over here to erase, and we can just erase the blue. Or, remember, we can go down here and we can drop this opacity down, like so. And if we wanted to change the color of that blue, we can right-click in here, and we can add a filter. And we can say, you know what, this filter needs to be hue saturation hsv where is that at? a b c d e f g uh, i guess we could just do h s l sorry h s h s l hue saturation lightness so with this here uh, i can go through i can change that hue in fact let's go to our channels here and we'll just look at our base color so as i'm changing the hue it's going from blue to red to green i can also it's like yeah it's too saturated drop that saturation down oh too bright drop the brightness down or crank it up a little bit um, so you do have a little bit of tweaky control even over a base even over a regular old fill layer um so, and yeah, there's a lot of ways uh to kind of stay a little bit less destructive but anyway we got our skull in here everything should be looking pretty good we got our subsurface scattering turned on um, even while we're in here we can go into our display settings and at the very bottom we can activate post effects so if you want to go through here and uh, maybe turn on your vignette so let's focus those eyeballs right on that skull there and then um, that's where you can turn that on and off and then you can even do depth of field we'll do that in uh, iray in a second and sorry we'll go back up here too uh, there's color correction in here. If you want to go through here and like, I want the whole thing to be more saturated. Uh, you can see we can really over crank that saturation. Uh, contrast, all that good stuff. And then, uh, what else do we want to do? Activate post effects, yes. Color correction, no. Depth of field tone mapping. Glare is a fun one. Turn on glare. <laughs> and uh, you get a little Elton John. Or you can go in here, you can change it to like, here's a cheap lens. Or here's um, filter sunny. Or I'm just going to do a little bit of bloom on here. I mean, that's still a pretty intense bloom. So underneath your glare, I'm going to, if you just drop uh, your remap factor down a little bit, that'll make those crosses a little less intense. And also your threshold, this will make everything kind of Vaseline on the lens look. Uh, and then you can crank that up. And then the luminance, you can make it super bright or just a, just a little taste. So we'll take that luminance up and we'll take that uh, remap factor. So just to get rid of those crosses. And that's a little bit uh, bloomy as that light goes across the surface. And then when we're in iRay, go ahead and click that. And it should save your own, your previous settings here. Uh, let's go ahead and do, you know what, while I'm talking, I want to do something real fun. I'm going to load up Maya real quick. So we got this in here, and uh, we got subsurface scattering enabled. And you have, I think we're good. I think we got everything we need. We got our display settings. Um, we can go back in, oh, the floor. So right now we have a floor enabled. So if we go over here to our dome, oh, post effects work in here as well. So you can just, this, this is all just done in post. Uh, the, the little fun glare stuff. But we can go here, uh, you can see we have clear color. So we have that turned on, sorry. And we can also go in here and uh, you can change the ground glossiness and make it shinier. You can change, oh, uh, come on Maya. Do not pull focus. You're writing uh, programs, programmers, if I, if I go to another program and I want your program to launch and I say, okay, you can launch in the background, keep in the background. Don't pull my focus. I hate that crap. Uh, but anyway, so we can go in here to reflectivity and we can change this to like white. And then we can go down here and the glossiness, we can crank that up. So you can have like a mirror finish, maybe not that glossy, um, on the object. And if, it's, if you want it sitting on the ground, what you can do is you can take this Y and again, hold down shift and just drag this up. You can even have that ground plane just right uh, underneath 
uh, the object here. But generally speaking, um, I don't need to see the reflection of him on here, so I'm going to take the glossiness back 0.5 and then reflectivity back black. So, but now the shadow is in contact uh, here, so if I drag this around, that shadow is going to be um, where the bottom of the head is, so that's kind of cool. And then we can go up here to the environment, and we can say, I want to look at, uh, you know, it's a cool one. Let's go ahead and so you can see the environment map. We'll go down here, turn off clear color temporarily. And um, this cave entrance is kind of cool. It's got that cool predator style look. And then uh, I think like autumn forest is a really moody one. So I'm going to use this lighting maybe. Uh, just kind of a nice moody lighting. So I can go to the, look at a skull from the front and then I can put that light maybe right behind him. Super neat. And then uh, server scattering's kicked in, looks great. And then if I want to rotate his eyes down, because mostly when you're looking at uh, Terminator, like classic Terminator, um, his eyes are kind of, uh, he's got his head down, his eyes are kind of pointing straight up. Uh, what we can do is, let's go out of Eye real quick. I'm going to go into Maya. We're going to go to File, Import, and I'm going to grab on our desktop here, I think I've got everything in here. Open your file. So these are the files um, you have available to you. So that's the FBX, then all the base maps we brought in. So just double click that one, and here we go. Hit F to frame, and you can do this in Blender, you can do this in mode, it doesn't really matter. But what I want to do is I want to rotate the eyeballs down. So I'm going to uh, select all these, and I'm going to go into rotate, and I'm going to hit, let's go hit the space bar, let's go on the cross side view here, and I'm going to hit 4, so I can see this a little better. I'm going to change this pivot, so I'm going to hit D, and I'm just going to move this pivot right to the middle of my eyeballs. Hit D to go out of pivot mode, and I'm just going to rotate these so they're up. Or it look a little goofy um, temporarily. He's going to be like looking up, but then when I go down here, I can like turn his head down and get a really cool glare look. Those those brows go over his eyeballs. Um, you know, metal, metal brows don't move, so if you want him to look angry, put his head down and have him look up, and then you'll get a little bit of that uh, cross-section on there. Uh, so we're going to go through here. We're going to go File, Export Selection, and we're going to put that right back into... Uh, or that desktop here, and then uh, files here. So I'm, I can just save. I can save a new file if I want to leave this one alone, or I can just save right over this one. Um, should be pretty safe. Let's let's do Apenator eyes up FBX export, and then we're gonna go back into Painter, and we're gonna go to File oh, Edit Prod Configuration. We're gonna select that mesh. And uh, hit OK, and it's going to go through, and it's going to rotate any geometry, and it's going to reapply anything. So if you ever needed to change uh, anything, UVs, even if you painted on your object, uh, it'll go through and remember your brush strokes and reapply those brush strokes onto your new UVs. So you're, it's super non-destructive. So now when we go into iRay, we can get a little bit more of that tilted, um, that tilted look. So we go through here, get some cool lighting on here. Maybe uh, tilt our camera a bit, and then we can go into our, uh, put our clear color back on, and uh, this is the, we can get kind of that kind of look. Now, uh, another cool thing we can do, uh, just so we can see this a little better, I'm going to switch to maybe that, maybe that shipyard here. So if we go in here, another cool thing in iRay, is you can go into, uh, what am I looking for here? camera settings, aperture. So we can change this aperture, uh, and it's really going to fuzz uh, everything out. It's going to get a little bit blurry in here. And the focus distance is just set to, I don't know, it's, it looks like a step back here somewhere. So just control, middle mouse click where you want that focus to be. So if we put it right up here up front, you're going to see the further away in Z depth it gets from that point, the blurrier it gets. Um, so this is a cool, you can see it's nice and sharp up here, and then a little blurrier out here. Um, and yeah, let's go with that. Let's go that clear color and we'll just kind of make it a little darker. And uh, there you go. So then you can just go up here and uh, underneath these settings here. There we go. Um, you can go through here and let's see if there's anything else we need to talk about. You can save the render. So if you want to override your viewport resolution, render it at a larger size and then just hit save. And you can do that. You can save it as a PNG, uh, EXR, JPEG, uh, all that good stuff. Um, and there, there you go. There's your beauty render. Now, uh, again, this is just to make a Terminator head, and you saw how easy that was. Uh, if I wasn't talking about it, it'd take about 
five, six, seven minutes to actually this whole thing, just kind of going and doing it and not discussing everything. Um, but you can also do, let's go in here to the skull mat. We don't have to, oh, let me go ahead and save this. Let's look file, save as, and this is going to be our um, demo ape in nature. Uh, it doesn't have to be this. It doesn't have to be this way. And you'll see it also killed my um, eyes uh, instance. We go in here, and again, like, you can make a uh, stormtrooper if you want, or any sort of painted metal variant. You want to do, like, a Mad Max variant, all that stuff. And we'll get more into variants later. And let's, while we're just working in here, let's go ahead and turn off those shadows temporarily. Um, so if I want to make this like like we had that baby blue I kind of liked, we can go in here and kind of put in this blue, and you could say, you know what, I want it to be super shiny, or maybe not too shiny. Uh, and you know what, I only want this to be on certain areas. So I can right-click this, say, uh, add mask with color selection, and then I'm going to pick color, and I can go through here, and I have color IDs baked, which we'll talk about in a second, uh, to these different areas. So you can very quickly just select the blue, and if you want to grab another one, just go pick another color, and I want it to go the inside here, and then maybe this one I want to be a new material. Um, so you can go through here and texture it up and stamp it up and all that good stuff and do all the cool stuff. So I wanted to get that out first, and again, if you're just joining us, let me uh, launch this up a, a real quick. Share... Here's the Apinator files. I'm posting it in here. And then once this posts on YouTube, I'll put it in the description. You can just download the file there. Go in there, go into Substance Painter, paint it up. And then right at the bottom of my screen here, um, tweet at me at PathMike. Use the uh, hashtag NVIDIA, NVIDIA RTX. And then uh, submit it by Monday. And then Tuesday, I'll have another live stream. And um, I, like I said, I'll have my wife pick the winner my supervision uh, i'll give her my input and she can take it or leave it <laughs> and then uh you can go from there so let's see and then oh so you win a um i think i got two license two one year licenses to uh substance painter so even if you're a substance painter subscriber um you get a free year or if you're brand new to substance painter just go and download it like i said you can go into um algorithmic People call it algorithmic, but the spelling is legarithmic, so that's, well, that's how I say it. You can try it for free, download it, give it a whirl. Uh, it's super fun. Whew. So sorry, everybody. Let me let me uh, catch back up. Let me get a drink of water. <laughs> hey, K. Chang. Sorry, I uh, was a little out there, uh, but I wanted to wanted to spiel uh, through that. So let's go ahead and file open, and we can open up while we're sitting here. Um, Apinator files, view details, date modified, substance painter. Yeah, and here's the auto saves it was doing. Just delete those out of there, and then load this up. Um, so let's see. We got uh, questions from Wozner. Uh, what would you say about photogrammetry speed on the new rig? Did Ryzen improve that much? How much? How do you feel in the percentages? Uh, if you watch, so if we go here to my YouTube channel. We actually did a little bit of that. Um, and I'll see here. Oh, not that one. That's my work. That's my work setup. Uh, if you go to my Tuesday's live stream, uh, in here, let's see if I can scroll through here. You can see we went into um, this is uh, a shape, and we did. I have was running some processes, uh, and this is interesting too. Depending if I get this a lot, if you're just if all you ever do on your computer is sculpt in ZBrush, um, you, the ZBrush is very CPU-centric and RAM speed-centric. Uh, so you probably don't need a super... I mean, it'll run on a toaster if you want it to. That's kind of the cool thing about ZBrush. Um, so in that case, just get a decent processor and then some decent RAM and you're good to go. Now, however, that decent RAM can't be put into a motherboard that uh, is the weak link. Um, if you really want to... If you really want to tax your machine and you really want to know how crappy your machine is, get in video editing. Um, if you have any weak links in your rig, you will know it. And what I mean by that is if you have a super kick-ass, uh, you know, RTX card and um, 128 gig of RAM and then a, uh, you know, like, let's go here, uh, it's AMD Ryzen 3rd by 3970X and then, like I said, a 2080 Ti, uh, but you're running it on a 7200 uh, RPM hard drive, it's going to run like crap. 
you have everything when you're doing video editing and scrubbing and video encoding and stuff you want everything and there's a lot of things like that photogram which is kind of one of them too where it's really going to tax your machine uh, when you go through here and you start and it use and this is um i guess we can just load it up uh, let's see hg salt uh this uses let me go through here let's go file let's go through our workflow here uh, add photos and let's see just grab the jpegs out of here we'll keep it simple um, here and then we're going to go to uh, align photos and that's going to work just fine uh, so while it's doing that go in here to um, you're going to see when i'm aligning it's really going to uh, use quite a lot of my um, system resources here and it's actually using quite a bit of my uh, gpu as well uh, this is kind of nice hybrid system where it's going to use a lot of your gpu and cpu and then this has this also has gpu acceleration as well uh, and you'll see that kick in um let's wait for this to finish um that's the other thing too is when you're loading if you're loading a ton of super high resolution like thousands of super high resolution photos you don't want a slow hard drive um and when you're processing this stuff you don't want slow ram or you don't want um, you know, this is like I said, PCIe 4.0 a bandwidth as my backbone. So everything I plug into it's going to go really fast. And if I'm plugging in an NVMe drive that has the super fast write speeds and read speeds, and then I have that uh, plugged in, I have 3600 speed RAM that I can even overclock. Uh, there was a question on my YouTube channel too, where I was like, you know, oh, it only supports 3200. It, it, support is uh, technically uh, some group determined that this is the uh, speed that they say you can put this at and everything will work fine. Of course you can overclock anything. And I'm not even really overclocking. Like I went into my, se I mean, I guess technically I am, uh, but I went into my uh, launch settings. And I was like, you know what? This RAM goes to 3,600 and uh, it's super stable. It's not like I'm pushing the limit or I'm doing a nice bath or anything like that. It's, it's silly. It's of course it'll run 3,600 just fine. Um, just because it says it supports 3,200 doesn't mean you can only just do 3,200. Um, you can do whatever you want. Uh, we go to our workflow here, and um, you know we probably need to crunch this down a little bit. Um, but anyway, photogrammetry is really one of those. I forget what the. Did I not edit the file? This is weird. Um, Oh, this is why. Uh, rectangle selection, no. Yeah, okay, sorry, I was in clean mode. That's why. Um, so I can go through here and I can change this bounding box. Um, although I must have messed up something here, resize region. There we go, jeez. Sorry, it, it's early. I, I didn't get a tremendous amount of sleep last night. <laughs> oh, oh, here's a real bummer. I'll talk about this later. Uh, I was I was so excited this morning to show you guys some stuff and um, kind of at the last minute kind of had some issues and I'll talk about that in a bit but I can go ahead and resize this bandbox size so now we can go in here in our workflow we can say um, build our dense cloud and then in here um, calculate the colors and all that stuff uh, as we're doing this uh, generating this uh, again it's it's taxing uh, the gpu it's not using CUDA cores necessarily oh, let's see uh yeah it's not using CUDA cores necessarily uh but it is using quite a significant amount of this and then it's also taxing my uh, cpu quite a bit so again but again it would run, be running even slower if I had slow hard drives you know so it all works together uh, and this is there's gpu accelerated stuff in here too when you're doing almost anything now so it's like i said it's a nice hybrid system um but if you're just doing zbrush Eh, maybe you can run on a toaster or if you're just doing a gpu rendering um and it's really just you know then get a badass gpu uh and then the rest of it just can kind of fall into place more or less um, or several gpus you can stack these and get uh, kind of a, a linear ex uh, increase in uh, render times uh, again i haven't done anything specifically to test that stuff out just yet uh, that's something we can get into uh, sorry for the super uh, long response, but yes, I did. I do feel a big change, and again, it's everything got faster in my new in my new rig here. Um, it wasn't just it wasn't just my um, let me go back to my table here. 
It wasn't just like I upgraded the just the motherboard or just the CPU. Everything, um, everything got updated. So, for example, yeah, I got the new motherboard, uh, new processor, new cooler, new RAM, new hard drive. Uh, again, NVMe hard drive, and then the uh, NVIDIA GeForce 2080 Ti RTX card, um, which we'll talk a little bit more about when we get into baking performance. It's nuts how fast that is now. Uh, using those specific RT cores. Uh, these now you can bake in Marmoset, uh, and in fact, if I go here, let me show you what I got for you. Eliminator source. I, the whole making of this guy has been recorded in detail. Um, it's going to take me a while to go through and edit. I have to. Oh, I, I got. I'm, I got a backlog of videos I need to get through. Uh, GeForce 2020. One of them I haven't even done that yet. I've been. I've been sidetracked, guys. I apologize. But uh, anyway, uh, I have all of that information for you. In fact, we do bake in Marmoset. We do throw this. You can even throw this in Marmoset if you want to go to File. Oh, here's the thing. Export textures. And you can go in here and you can say, you know, I want to export this um, to Marmoset. Uh, I think it's got a Marmoset thing in here, doesn't it? I thought it did. <clears throat> I could have sworn. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, you might have to look this up. You can choose like metal, uh, you know, here's Redshift and V-Ray and stuff like that, but you can go through here, PBR Metal Rough and all that good stuff. Here's another really cool thing. You go into Sketchfab and you can say, I want to export all of this stuff to Sketchfab. Now, the skull, maybe you want to export it at 4096. And the eyes, maybe you want to, you know, 1024 is probably enough. The teeth, 1024 is probably enough. The iris, got 512 might be enough, but we'll give it a 1024. Uh, and then when you have this selected, the Sketchfab, uh, can, and you can always go into your configuration and change, you know, what maps you want plugged in, make your own custom ones. Um, but you can go in here and export, and that's going to export all of this stuff to, for example, Sketchfab. And I went ahead and did that. There it is. So we can go ahead and load this up here. And it'll go through, and it'll even upload it for you. You can type in the tags and stuff, and go. You can go and check it out. And then this you can put on your ArtStation page. You can uh, you can use this even when you go into um, Substance Share. You can click that link, and then you can go through here, and you can kind of check this stuff. You, you can have people kind of go around your model. Let's make this a little bit bigger. You can go in here to OBS, make sure you can see. Yeah. So this is in Sketchfab. This is running on a web browser right now. And I can go through here. Um, you can hold down. Um, Alt and drag your lights around. And if we go out of this mode so we can see, let's make this bigger so you can see it. Hold on. Let me. It's kind of a pain working on a big monitor sometimes. I can get you to see most of this. Um, you can go in here to your 3D settings. And once you have it loaded in, you probably are going to have to do some of this stuff. So let's go ahead and load in our 3D model here. You can see over here, you can start with the basic settings. Uh, so if you want to change your background, you can go here to your background. You can turn your background on or off. Or you can make it a color, an image, or you can uh, make it the environment that it's using to light it. Uh, wireframe, turn on or off. Uh, over here under lighting, um, I have lights actually put into this object. You can just use the HDR images if you want to change like this to um, the road here uh, or whatever you want to. Um, You know, there's a bunch of really cool stuff in here. So depending on the kind of the mood uh, you're looking for, uh, you can definitely just do that. But I'll go put it back on Shipyard. Now, down here, let's see if there's anything else. Shadow, shadows you probably want on. And then um, you can also scooch this up just a little bit. Urgh, get, there we go. Um, shadows on, brightness, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, you can change all this good stuff. And then over here, you can turn lights on, and then now you have little lights you can go through here. You can hold down Alt and rotate them around. And uh, if you want the lights to play a larger role, you go in here and change, change that brightness of your HDR image, high dynamic range image that's lighting your object here. And you can go through here, you can grab any one of these lights, and you can kind of rotate the direction that's coming. You can also use presets. You can go in here and just say, you know what, I want fairy camp. And go ahead and click this, and now you'll get uh, that kind of look. Or I think I was using Evil Genius or something like that. Um, if you are going to do this, uh, probably some of these you're going to want to put cast shadows on, so it's not like lighting up interior spaces too much. So if I grab this direction one here, um, I can turn on cast shadows, and I'll go ahead and make it. Maybe it's this one. Cast shadows. There we go. 
So now uh, it's just a little bit more realistic. And also you can do screen spaced AO and stuff like that. Um, through here, you go into your materials. If you need to go into like subsurface scattering for the teeth, you can go to eyes mat down here to teeth. Make sure in here you go to subsurface scattering and you turn it on. Um, also under aiming occlusion, you can do this and turn on occlude specular and that'll make it work a little bit better. Um, it also has post effects too, just like when you're in Painter, you can go through here and you can turn on uh, screen space reflection. So you get that nice red shine from the eyeballs in there. And then uh, screen space AO, make everything kind of sit a little bit nicer. You can turn grain on or on, or you can, um, here's bloom. So this is the bloom you're kind of playing with. You can kind of go through here and you can change that bloom intensity. And then tone mapping color balance, vignette. Chromatic aberrations is a fun one. You get that kind of uh, CRT, unsynced CRT kind of look there. Um, so this is all post stuff. And then you can add annotations, animation, virtual reality. Look at that. Cool beans. And then sound if you want to as well. And then you can just go save settings. Um, and then you send a link to anybody. You can go in here and you can say, hey, share this or put this on your art station. And people can look at your images and then they can go, whoa, what? Let me check that out. And then they can also do your model inspector. And they can say, I want to see his base color. I want to look at his uh, wireframes. Let me see your wires. And then uh, there you go. Pretty cool. Yes, I do speak fast. So now when this gets onto YouTube, let me show you that. Let's do, a, let's do a tutorial on YouTube. Go down here to this little gear icon, go to playback speed, and if you really want to have a good time, go over here to 0.25. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Cool. Sorry, I'm getting caught up in chat here real quick. Is my voice sounding weird? Testing. I mean, I got my mic. Everything looks. Everything looks fine. <laughs> uh, hey, Mike, do you switch your brush settings from object space to texture space when you paint inside of Substance Painter's UV viewer? That's an excellent point. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, you definitely can. Uh, so when you're going here, let's go to uh, 2D and 3D. So when you're in your, okay, it's not something I do often. Uh, that's a really good point. There's actually a lot of brush settings in here. In fact, I guess we can talk about that. Um, so you can change your alignment. You can do like a camera base. You can do tangent ramp, tangent planer, and UV. Uh, if you want to just kind of use this to, and you also take, turn back face calling on and off um, to kind of get that. And then um, you can do object viewport and texture space, uh, size space, depending on uh, your brush size, stuff like that. So. Um, there's a lot, I, I do sometimes, but usually instead of, usually when I'm just painting, I just kind of start painting. Um, okay, let me, okay, let me go to my voice here. Filters? I don't have any filters on my mic. Um, I'm a little worried. Yeah, USB audio device. Huh. Well, let's see. Let me go to my YouTube channel here. <laughs> okay, that's bizarre. You know what? Uh, it's... You, it's still listenable. Thank God. Oh, I don't know what's going on there. Hmm. I wonder if uh, YouTube's had a weird issue. Sorry, I kind of sound like this. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I do sound like Kylo Ren. <laughs> I'm Matt. I'm a technician. I'm a radar technician. Her Kylo Ren had an 8-pack. Might be something with my OBS. It might be something with my restream going to YouTube or something bizarre. I'll have to check that out. Um, when did they add GPU rendering to Substance Painter? Substance has always been pretty GPU-centric. Um, 
in fact, it's like Substance Designer, especially when I start out in Substance Designer, uh, a lot of that goes right through the GPU. So a lot of that speed increase is going to be, uh, like I said, you can change it CPU, but GPU uh, going through your uh, baking your nodes and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I don't have anything on my microphone that's different, man. And like I literally streamed Tuesday and didn't change anything. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm recording. Stop recording. Or something bizarre. Oh, I'm going to my settings here. Audio. Sample rate. Microphone. Decay rate. I'm at a loss. This all looks fine. Um, but again, uh, like, like you said, it kind of slows me down. Um, if you hold the Alt and click on the Material button, it will close the others. Just a little trick. Awesome. So Alt, you click on the... There you go. Cycle through it instead of just clicking this little one icon up here. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, very neat. And then I'll go through and uh, cycle that. And I think... Yeah. And when we were dragging stuff, I want to say, like, uh, we just drag grass right onto that skull here. And then if you ever have, like, a regular material, you can go through and you can just change it to whatever material you want. And then uh, Smart Materials, you can drag right on here as well. Um, if you want to ever get cooler material or uh, want to check these out, again, we went to Substance Share already. You can also go in here to Substance Source. And let me see if I'm, if I'm logged in automatically. Um, probably not. Yeah, so I have to log in here real quick. Let me... Oops. Give me a second. Because this is really cool. Yeah, I know. Jeez. Seem to be uh empty substance. Log in. There we go. So now when we're logged in, uh, you can go through here and you can do metal and uh, or you know we can do anything or even there's even uh, free assets up here you can go through here and anything you want to kind of check out you can go through and just uh, let's look at some of these metals here I mean, cool this iron rusty is kind of neat so we just go ahead and download uh, and it'll say own and it's downloading um, iron rusty sbsar that's a z downloading downloading that would be anything to do with my internet speed. I'm on gigabit internet. Again, I've never had this problem before, uh, so that's a little bit interesting. So we can go ahead and close that out, and then... Um, that would really suck, though, if my... All of a sudden, my internet was kind of weird. Uh, and then you should... Iron Rusty should show up here once it's done downloading. And you can also do searches. So we're going to do like Iron Rusty. So owned. We downloaded it. And once we're out of here, um, should pop up here. But again, now I'm starting to wonder if I'm having like internet problems or something. Hmm. Uh, ZBrush at 4K. Uh, I mean, I'm on a, I'm not on, four, I'm not on a 4K monitor. I think Paul Gabriel uses 4K. And, um, actually, now that I think about this, let's go to YouTube here. If you want to speed my voice up, because I sound bizarre, uh, go into any one of these, go into the gear icon, and then you can go up here and you can change that uh, playback speed uh, to a little bit faster. Yeah, this is really dumb. Sorry about that, everybody. Actually, I, I like my voice better that way, actually. <laughs> Happy accident. I like when I sound like this. Um, when adding height to the eyes, is there any difference to adding the height channel versus the normal channel, or is it preferred to what kind of alpha you have? Um, I like the height channel because I'm just dealing with... Uh, I don't have to worry about normal strength. I can just do grayscale... Uh, black to white. It's just simpler. Uh, when you go to bake that out, uh, you can bake that information down to your normal map. Or like uh, like you're saying, you can go in here, you have a normal map channel, you can stamp right onto that normal map channel. We'll get to that uh, in a bit too. Yes, just like Nicholas says. Yeah, and you can use the height map for, I suppose, a displacement map. Uh, 
if you'd like. Uh, ZBrush performance, does this document size affect my ZBrush performance? Yes, it does. If you do your ZBrush document size and you say, um, let's go ahead and load something up here. Actually, yeah, and I'm not really running anything bizarre. This is weird. This is weird. Uh, let me go to, um, oh yeah, I'm on my desktop. Uh, so if you're near and you're sculpting in ZBrush and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm having a good time sculpting uh, and everything should be fine, but then you're like, okay, I need to render this. So we're going to go in here to pers turn on perspective mode and we go in here to turn on our floor and then we say, let's go to our render settings here and we're going to go to our render properties and we're going to say, let's do shadows and ambient occlusion. And then we're going to go in here to our our shadows and then we're going to take that string down just a bit. Um, for the shadows we're going to crank those rays up um, just because what we're going to do is we're going to take this angle and crank that up so we get a nice a little bit softer fall off and then the AO we're going to go into AO settings and we're going to say take that blur down to two. I want a tighter AO than that and uh, we can change that strength but I think it'll be fine. Uh, then we'll go into our light we'll kind of move this light around and this is another thing too where it's like I only use ZBrush for sculpting. Well as soon as you go into um, like BPR rendering uh, it's going to use more of your system. So uh, in this case, uh, even uh, even your GPU kicks in uh, quite a bit. Uh, but of course, um, the CPU it doesn't fully utilize it like uh, light ba light bakes and then real or photogrammetry or anything like that. But it still uses a pretty good portion of that. You can also consider turning off your um, uh, threading. Your um, I forget what they call it. Uh, Intel calls it hyper threading. Um, basically, or yeah, my brain's already starting to go. But you can you can make it so that there is no hyper threading. So you're gonna see I have 32 cores and it's 64 threads. Um, you can make so it just has the cores and then no threading. Um, but it seems to be doing fine. Um, so now you can see it'll render faster. And then here's your nice uh, shadows and stuff like that. Uh, the floor is catching the shadow. And then, uh, so you're in here and you're sculpting. Uh, however, if you wanted to make a, like a 4K render, it's based on your document size. But we can go in here and we can say new document, and we can say, oops, um, so you can just double. So now I'm at 2240 by 1680. Of course, you can't see everything, so you need to go into your document. You need to zoom out a little bit so you can see the entire document. And it's really actually kind of hard to see because, um, let me go in here, make this so I can see that document a little bit better. So document background, zoom, so we can see the whole thing. There we go. So here's our entire document. Now, if you just start going here and you want to do a render, um, that's fine, because now you're going to render at a much larger document. And again, um, it's going to gather a lot more of your resources. It's going to take a little bit longer because, you know, you're more pixel rendering. And we have, this is this increases your render time too quite a bit, the sub pixel. Um, you want to maybe, I mean, if you don't need super duper aliasing, you can turn it down, but it's fine. Um, so, and also if you go in here to render, you got your render passes here. So you want to take these into Photoshop. Um, you can, here's your depth map and shadow and AO, um, all good stuff in your mask. Um, you can also go in here to your Z plugin, ZBrush Photoshop, and you can just hit the ZBrush to send this to Photoshop and, um, it'll load everything up in the Photoshop and layers for you. Uh, however, uh, it's like, okay, I got a cool render. Oh, you know what? I want to make a modeling change. You're going to go in here and you're going to start sculpting. Uh, you might notice that it's a little bit more laggy on your sculpting uh, and it's a little bit more stuttery. Uh, that's the other thing too, a ZBrush with the faster hard drives. I've noticed my undos, like I was doing like 14 million polygon meshes and uh, undos were nice and fast. So, because uh, sometimes undos can get a little bit chuggy on your super high resolution meshes. Um, Seems to be working pretty good. So anyway, uh, you might notice that your performance dips. In that case, you know, just take document size, W size, new document, and that's going to make the document just fill up this area. And now it's not trying to process or handle um, any any wasted pixels. So you'll get a little bit of that um, performance back. Hey, Leo. <laughs> yeah, uh, for some reason. There's something going on with, and I now I'm starting to wonder if it's my internet speed all of a sudden for some dumb reason this morning. It's doing something weird. Ubisoft Sweden, how's it going? Yeah. <laughs> and and I do talk fast, so it's actually kind of maybe a good thing that... Um, 
cool. And if I skip anything, I apologize. I'm trying to go through here real quick to get caught back up. Okay, audio, but a pause screen. Okay, maybe the streaming is having a little bit of a problem keeping up if you're watching live real time. Is there a way how to copy paint from, say, color to roughness like in Mari, or is that a different approach? Uh, copy. Yes, you can stamp. Uh, yes, you can. Let's see if I remember how to do this. Some of this stuff is, I hate to say it, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm director of character art, which means um, I don't I do not do anything anymore. So me, I haven't, it's been a while since I've actually made something. Like this is a, you know, it's been a while. Um, so I may not be as well versed in everything. Uh, but Wes McDermott, in fact, if you go to, shout out to Wes McDermott, if you go to, um, Let me see if I can get a link for you. Substance Academy. I agree. Uh, there's a lot of really good stuff in here. Like, if you just want to get started in Substance, these are really, really good resources. Um, so I, can, I, can send you, I can link you guys that. Um, oops. Let me scroll back up so I didn't lose that. And there we go. Uh, yeah, so you can go through Substance Academy, and that, that'll take you through everything. And he goes through and he stamps stuff. And he's he's much more knowledgeable about a lot of the stuff than I am. Um, gosh, I'm not even really certain if I remember. Um, so here, over here, you have uh, your clone relative source, and I think this has to be uh, relative or absolute. Let's keep relative. And then I think this thing has to be set um, below or above here, and then also... Let me see if I put it below. I'm trying to remember. Sorry, everybody. Um, there, there is a way you can stamp. Uh, of course, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? Um, curve it or sharpen. Yes, you can. I had to look it up. Obviously, I don't do it very often. But yeah, you can see how it's kind of sampling from that uh, square right here. Um, it'll kind of depend, I think, where your layer ends up and also uh, how you're painting. Let me see. P. No. Yes, you can. Uh, can I? No, I cannot. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to get caught up again. There we go. Cool. And again, if I miss something, just keep shouting it out. I, I apologize. Um. Actually, yeah, I think my wife's a little bit under the weather. She just got back from CES, so I'm hoping it's allergies. Uh, scattering at the bottom of your layer stack, your shirt's effective right now. Yes, uh, because everything above that, um, you know, we have our color breakup, uh, but I didn't paint any scattering on there, so it's I didn't it didn't really change anything. But over here, my like my teeth white doesn't have any scattering. My base properties doesn't isn't affecting the scattering. Just my scattering. Um, so I uh, move it to the top. Scattering is gonna maybe overwrite something. But if I go, th all I need to do is to verify this. Go through my channels. And then um, my scattering here, yeah, is set to one. So even if it's at the bottom, um, now if I did go in here and I did a layer and I had scattering turned on, and that scattering was set to black, then yes, that would override uh, my scattering. But it can be at the bottom. Um, but I mean, if it makes you if it makes you feel safer, you can definitely move that to the top so that you know your scattering is not. If you accidentally put in like a new fill layer and it made the scattering to black and you weren't paying attention. Um, yeah, you can certainly do that. Uh, oh, and you can also paint across UDIMs. Let me... Uh, well, if you're in the beta. So here, if I scroll down... And actually, a lot of UVs. Uh, rolling. Oh, uh, there's a lot of stuff we can talk about. Uh, but here, if you register for the beta... Uh, you can go through and you can actually paint across UDIMs in the beta. So that's kind of neat for you UDIM folk. And I do have a UDIM version of this. Um, it's not really any different than texture sets in this version. You use Alice Super Self to create your small details, but to protect real production, would you use, wouldn't you use Painter to get better control? Yes, and we talked about that a little bit. Definitely. Yes, this is a skull from Tuesday. Hey! Uh, me to add Substance 3D tag in the tweet as well, believe it or not, to help get the free licenses for the winners. Let's, okay, let me, okay, let's do this. I think I can that, update that right now. Yeah, I was just going through the email thread, and that's the one that jumped out to me, but 
let's talk a little bit about Photoshop, everybody. Um, so here's my working file, and then I can go through here and I can say, okay, submit here and then here. I'm just going to duplicate this off, scooch this over, and then we'll call it um, put that on there as well, and then they can see it. It's all so these guys, uh, when people are doing this, they can kind of check out your work too. Uh, it'll be, it's, it's funner that way, I think. Here, uh, here, here, here. There we go. Uh, you know what, it probably makes more sense if these were close together and then it was at me. Again, everybody, sorry about my voice. I think when it posts the actual video, the stream will catch up, I guess. Again, I haven't really had this problem. So now what we can do is we can turn this off, and we can say, um, file, save as, PNG, and it is this overlay here, replace it. And then uh, that should update the bottom of my banner there. Oops, cancel. Photoshop. There it is. There it is. Thank you. <laughs> um, color roughness, like Mari, or is there a different approach? Yeah, you can. Uh, sorry about that. I should have. Uh, yeah, the stamp. You can use a stamp. Again, I had, I'd have to look that up real quick. Um, better for a modeling and texturing portfolio to show off work based on original concepts. Uh, if you're, I would say if you're just starting out, I would use someone else's concept just because they're going to be stronger. It's hard, it's hard for you to compete if you're new, even for somebody, even if you've been in the industry 15 years, you don't do a lot of concepting. For you to make something unique and cool and aesthetically pleasing, uh, you know, some concept artist who's been doing it for their entire career uh, is probably going to be a little bit better at that. So, it, but you know, you always want to give them credit or hell, even write them up on our station and ask them. Um, but yeah, you probably get better results because, like, even if you had amazing technical execution, if it's on something that's not really that aesthetically pleasing, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot a little bit. Uh, but if you can concept and do your own modeling, then that's just icing on the cake. Um, you know, makes you more marketable for sure. And that's something you, even when you're doing models based on other people's concept, try to be mindful of, like, what's successful about that concept so that you can kind of put that into your um, working memory uh, while you go through and then as you start creating stuff or as you're interpreting concept you can interpret concept better if you're a better designer so it all kind of works hand in hand um never you know i wish i could go back in time and tell myself this uh, i i got you know technical pipeline workflow proficiency stuff like that I'm, i can be an effective artist i think i said this uh in my even in my fact here uh let's go to our station here yeah, it looks like i got bumped from here but if you go to our station learning I was at the top for a little bit. You could go and um, see this intro to ZBrush series. You can click on here and it'll take you through. Actually, um, hmm, I'm not sure how to get back to the interview. There's kind of a smallish type of interview in here. Um, or basically, I was like, yeah, you can, the more workflow and pipeline stuff, you can be a more effective or a more uh, efficient artist. You can get stuff done faster and better technically um but if you're just put, you know polishing a turd then um all the proficiency in the world isn't really going to help your final results so even people who do uh, even things i've seen where it's like master classes in zbrush i'm like yeah i'm gonna learn a lot of zbrush stuff and really it's like man, your clay brush dynamesh and i'm done um however what they're really good at is the aesthetics is the uh, design of things so if you can make a awesome thing using just a clay brush uh and zbrush then you win Honestly, even if it takes a little bit longer, you know, you, you will have a better final product, uh, even against somebody who has all the technical proficiency in the world, but they can't design their way out of a paper bag. Uh, Octane with Blender. I was using Octane and Unreal. That was kind of a, that was a fun one. A little plug-in they had. Um, this is this pack. It works best for two pack three. Cool. Thank you, Nicholas. Uh, let's see. Again, just trying to get caught up real quick. Uh, the Apeinator was hand retopologized. Um, 
basically, I mean, and it was quick. Like, basically what I did was I went into ZBrush, and I did a really quick pass on this, and then um, in here, let's go file. I can show you guys that real quick. Let's go into... What am I looking for? Desktop, uh, Animator, Files, Resurface, Painter, Source, Reference, Editing, uh, Resurface, Working. So for example, I'd bring in a really quick, uh, just really quick uh, retopologize uh, version of this. And in fact, I'm probably only doing half. So if I go in here and I say, and you can, this is stuff you can do in Blender, Modo, 3D Studio Max, um, anything you want to use, no big deal. So we're going to go in here to low and high, and then we can, um, so for the high here, if I want to uh, retopologize in the skull or the jaw, for example, I can turn on the jaw. And then for this one here, go ahead and hide this stuff. We can go in here to the, Jaw. So let's say this is what I was bringing in, and actually let's get rid of all that. So uh, we have our low res and our high res, uh, and then I can go into, uh, I have a hotkey for this, going into um, quick, oh, where is it? I'll show you where it is. Modeling toolkit, you have the quad draw over here. Uh, in order to, for this to work correctly, obviously you're going to have to go in here uh, to your high and make it live. So you just click this little button, so now you have a live surface. And again, usually what I would do is I would have, I would just be working on half because everything on here is mirrored. I'm I'm super lazy, guys. Um, so again, Control Shift Q uh, is my hotkey to go in here to do quad draw stuff, and then I can just kind of snap to these. And you can go through here and you can like um, delete stuff out of here. Um, you can go through here and you can move the stuff around. You can um, go through here and you hold on Shift and put these things in here. You can put in little points where you want your uh, geometry to be and just go in and uh, draw these out. For example. Uh, and then you can hold down uh, control and you can put in edge loops or control middle mouse to kind of snap one to the middle. So if you go up here, you can put one right down the middle. Hold down shift to smooth. You want to kind of relax. And then um, also, if we go in here and um, hold down control shift, we'll get rid of some of these here. So uh, we're going through here and we're topologizing like so. And then hold down shift. And oh, that's another thing too. So you can use tab and middle mouse and then get rid of that. So uh, if you wanted to just drag out, I think it's, what is it, tab, and then, no, let's do this, tab, hmm, oh, there it is, uh, you can go through here and you can tab, and then, oh, God, I need my hotkeys, I don't, I don't do this part very often, but you can actually just drag out, um, topology on here. What I usually do is I just click through here and add topology and hold on shift. And then if I need to, I can do tab middle mouse and I can just drag out a whole edge edge ring or edge loop, I should say. And then again, you can go in there and smooth that out. Um, you can also just do it by individual edge. You can say like tab and snap, tab and snap. And it's like, oh, I want to cut through here. Well, if you hold on control, it's going to want to cut through this entire side, but it doesn't cut all the way through. Um, I have uh, hockey assigned to this too. So I can just go into quick draw, right click, and then go back into quad draw. Um, but you can also do control shift right click and you can go multi cut tool and then you can go through here and you can do, you know, whatever cuts you want and then right click and then control shift right click and go back into quadra really quickly. And then you can go through here and you know, snap, snap, snap. So a little bit of easy cleanup. Um, and like I said before, um, a lot of programs have this stuff built in. So not as uh, it's really topology, topology, fun and easy. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see if I can find out what you're talking about here. Oh, Control One will also isolate. So we'll go ahead and turn off our live here, and then we'll go into low stacked here. Oops. Oops. Quadra. Let's hit W. There we go. Um, so, question, how did you achieve those small gaps between large shapes, like around the eye sockets, I assume, polygroups, and edge loop? Um, yes, basically, uh, and again, I'll have more information on this. Uh, I'll have the full breakdown. I don't want to go too much into ZBrush right now, um, but essentially I did a mask and then an edge loop mask border, and then I popped that out into its own separate meshes. Uh, we can actually show you a little bit of that. Let's see, recording, no. Oh, I always forget where I put this stuff. I just moved it this morning. Um, let's go to working. So we got working files here, and uh, this, this is my quick and dirty zero mesh. 
uh, Z-Sphere remesh, and then I took that in and cleaned it up. Uh, and again, it just, it just, it's fast to do in ZBrush. I don't have to decimate anything, and I can get the work done, um, again, fast, 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 and then clean up as fast, and then I'm done fast. Uh, but basically, yeah, so this purse here. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and uh, let's do this. Let's clone this off. And then I'll do a quick um, mirror and weld, and then we'll do a quick split two similar parts. Okay. There we go. So now I can go through here, and these are separate subtools. In fact, if I wanted to, I can go in here to transform and explode stuff out. So now you can see um, all the different component parts. And in fact, that exposed a bit much, I think. And let's do X, Y, and Z. There we go. So we can kind of uh, explode that out a little bit. And you can see, uh, basically, it's kind of inset in there. Basically, what I did was do a mask uh, inset and then... Um, You know, we can we can talk a little bit about gamma res. Here's 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 what really uh, oh I'm so excited. So basically, um, if you go to my uh, and this is all on my R station page too. If it's more easy, easier for you to navigate my R station page, if you go to my profile, um, just pav my my file page. Um, and here there's a Houdini uh, game dev tool set, and you can go through here and you can do um, auto game res. If you click up here, it's 32 video on how to do this. Um, it's a little bit dated. Houdini moves fast. Um, they're kind of like Blender and that things just happen real quick. Uh, they're, they're, they're pretty on the ball about some things. Um, we've got some really, really keen uh, people in the Houdini lab. So basically, that's one thing I want to mention is down here in the Game Dev Tools. It's not Game Dev Tools anymore. It's basically Houdini Labs. If, I mean, I can cross my fingers. I was having, I was going to do this whole new thing with the new updated Houdini. And then I had licensing issues. So um, I wasn't able to do it. But we can do maybe, if we have enough time today, we'll do maybe Auto Game Res. Uh, you probably don't. Um, but anyway, I was going to go from here to Houdini and then do auto uh, rhizome UVs and uh, quad remesh in Houdini and export that out. Uh, you can even bake in Houdini if you wanted to. And then I was going to talk about all of that um, as kind of an intro to getting started um, if you were on your own. But then um, my Houdini lights messed up. So now I'm kind of Houdini less at the moment. Um, but I, it's, it's a lot of cool updates. So give me a chance to do. ZBrush 2020 videos, and then maybe edit this thing in, or, you know, I'll do the Houdini one next, because that's quick and easy, and then I'll do um, this making of skull stuff. I'll get that uh, out. Uh, and you don't, uh, you can decimate it down. You don't have to read Topo, uh, but it does need to be game. It needs to, I mean, you don't want to put in 40 million polygons in the substance. It's a little bit, not, not a great idea. Uh, you don't have to bake maps, though. You can just go into Substance. In fact, Wes McDermott's um, his getting started. He just kind of uh, puts his textures onto... I don't think it has normal maps or anything. However, normal maps are cool, though, because you can do stuff like... Let's hit M here, and let's go ahead and do... Um, we got the skull selected, layers. Again, we'll go ahead and put another fill layer in here. So um, normal maps can kind of catch information... So, well, I think that's true. May, I could be lying. Let's go in here to our thing. We'll turn off shadows real quick. Uh, for example, if we go in here to our particle brushes and we do, uh, there's a fill brush in here so you can go through and let's do add black mask. I can go through here and I can, uh, again, use this particle brush to go through and fill uh, areas and it'll kind of detect where uh, edges are on your mesh. So I can go through here and I was like, I want to fill in this little area. I want to fill in this little area and this little guy. And let's see if these fill in. If these fill in, uh, it's using the norm F. It's not, um, and this is something too. Yeah, it does. So you just dump that in there and uh, it'll go through and fill. Now, this obviously isn't the only thing you can do. Um, you can go through here and you can say, you know what? Let's do a rainstorm. Just click and drag, or click in your document, and it'll rain particles on your mesh. And wherever it's raining, it's going to paint particles on your mesh here. Uh, and then whatever uh, your base layer was, so if I hit M, you can go through here and be like, you know what, I want this to be acid rain. So we'll go down here and we'll say, let's make this kind of greenish. And then also go in here to your height and drop that down. So now we can kind of have, as it's raining, it's also cutting into the mesh. And you know have that all happen in real time. Um, you know, let's do add another, let's add a black mask over that. You can do a sandstorm. So let's click in here. And then uh, as it's, it's like etching the metal as those particles fall. Um, you can also do stuff like uh, leaks. You can go through here 
can kind of just start painting leaks along here. And again, it just depends on what you're underlying. If you want this to like leak rust, you can actually make a rust base layer. Uh, we'll just do a quick and dirty one. Um, but yeah, all that good stuff. Uh, particle brushes are fun. Um, here's another cool one. If you want to do like a laser impact or burn, burn's a cool one. So if you're doing, um, let's do this, let's say changes to a black, really sooty color and then crank that roughness up. And then uh, the height, I don't need any height on my burn to go here. And then if you had like a little areas where it caught on fire, go through here and you can just uh, paint part of the lip, burn. There we go. And then uh, we need to paint white. There it goes. Uh, so now you can see, you know, if there was like a little engine port, let's say these things back here, there's an engine port here, you can go through here and you can just kind of put some burn in there and we'll go through and kind of burn up, uh, up your mesh there. Whew. Pretty neat stuff. His eyeballs on fire. Yeah. Ta-da. Uh, and of course, you know, you can always go through and paint directly on this, or you can do a paint layer. Uh, you can actually do this, all this on a paint layer as well. Um, was I answering a question? I forget. Sorry. Um, the question about how to make a Boolean object with using subtools with each other. I just wanted my Boolean effect. I don't want to mess up other subtools with each other. Um, yeah, you can do that with DynaMesh. So for example, um, I mean, you can do, there's three ways in, um, ZBrush, you can do it. So here's an easy way. So make Play Mesh 3D. Uh, we'll go ahead and you can do a DynaMesh version of this here. And then control drag out another DynaMesh, control drag, and then now these are Boolean. Or um, you can also go through here, you can isolate this one, and you can say group, polygroup as DynaMesh sub. Um, here, and then control drag. And then it's done a mesh through um, the subtractive, or you can actually grab this piece out and split it off. And then you can be like, okay, I want this to be separate. And then temporarily you can be like, okay, I want this to be subtractive, turn on live Boolean. And then you have a live version of your mesh. You can go through and like test the cuts first. And then you can go down here to Boolean. You can say make Boolean mesh, or you can just merge this down and then that'll make it automatically DynaMesh sub and then control drag. Um, you can also use Mesh Fusion. Um, it's a little bit more restrictive, but uh, Mesh Fusion ZBrush, but. Uh, skull is made in ZBrush and the textures are made in some Painter, yes. Micro clipping, I mean, yeah, and I went through, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, getting cop couldn't get up. Um, I'm not sure about the points on substance source. I'll have to follow up with that one. Or actually, they'll let you know. Um, I'll DM if you if you win, win. Uh, if you get picked, <laughs> my wife picked you. Um, they'll DM you with the. I'll DM you and then they'll get you in touch with the the specs of that. Cool, cool. Uh, yes, my mic is in the USB port. I literally haven't sh touched anything since Tuesday, since the last time I used it. Hey, from Russia. Yeah, it's a prototype. Uh, upgrade from 7700K to 3950X. Uh, again, it kind of depends on what you do. Um, if you need lower cores, higher clock speed for uh, the stuff, work that you do. I need, I run the gamut, so I do... Uh, and, and the other the cool thing about this too is even if I do go to a, a, a something that doesn't utilize distributed workload very evenly or at all, uh, just lights one of these things up, I still have a boost clock. So I'm still getting like 4.2, 4.25 uh, boost on that C, on that one. Because I'm just using one core out of 32, uh, it can run that pretty quick. And I could even overclock that if I wanted to. So it's still a fast processor even on single threaded applications. Um, but, you know, I also don't want to limit myself to be like, well, I only want 4, 8, or 16. It's like, well, no, there's some things where this comes in real handy. So, you know, when I said, like I said earlier, like video editing will make you, uh, 
roll you to a crawl if you have any weak links in your backbone. Bitmap mask in for a base color using thickness maps that similarly use the scatter channel. Um, yeah, if you go into Marmoset, you can have a you can stack or any renderer really. You'll probably have a lot of options for going in there and plugging in different subsurface scattering layer colors. Um, but for substance scattering, it's basically just on or off, or like we did where we put in our thickness map and inverted it, and then did the levels contrast. Um, that's how you can control it. But it's not like, and you can also change the color, but you're not going in and painting on that color. You can paint on your base map. You know what? I, I want to say scattering is probably just grayscale, if I was a betting man. Um, I guess I could look. I do have that right here, right? Uh, layers, control, right click. Scattering map. Yeah, I don't, I don't see myself putting any um, color information in here. Oh yeah, I guess you can. Well, call me wrong. But uh, as far as that actually showing up, I'm not positive on that one. Let's go ahead and. I'm, I'm out of my element here. So yeah, the color, subsurface scanning, that's the color. But I don't think this color does much of anything, I think. Yeah, I think where it goes, it's grayscale. Um, and using clip brush with curve, is there a way to get rid of the rotation increases? There's only 15 degrees, I don't want that. Oh, that I'm not sure about. Maybe somewhere in your preferences. Oh, yeah, so what he's talking about is control shift clip, and then you can um, hold down shift and it snaps to 30. Yeah, it should be five. 35, 40, 45, 50. If I was guessing, it would be somewhere in your preferences. Off the top of my head, I'm not exactly sure. You might have to dig through there or look that one up. Okay, I'm caught up. If I miss anything, shut it back out. Um, cool. Uh, going, 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 going. As it goes on a tray to slow vertices of my quadra when they're inside live mesh, I'm reach apologizing. Uh, yeah, I had that exact same problem, and that's kind of why I prefer to do a quick Z remesh. Or I'm Z remesh is good too. You can do a quick Z remesh and then clean it up. Uh, or Houdini, you can do a quadra and clean that up as well. Um, and then also doing Z remesh, doing a cleanup. And if you go to my channel, there's I do a Z remesh and then I uh, put. Uh, there's so many things I want to show you guys, but I have such limited, limited time. Um, for example, uh, I can duplicate this off and I can do a quick, it's going to be ugly as hell, but bear with me. That size down, zero measure. Um, blah, blah, blah. give it a second. So let's say, uh, I want to zero mesh this just to get something quick, uh, on here. And you know, let's just do half. And I could do, I could actually do a much better job on this if I did a uh, Boolean and then zero mesh based on that. But just again, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and just clone this result off and then delete this. And I'm going to go to append a Z sphere. And then the Z sphere here, we can, um, this isn't symmetrical, it's so not worried about um, scaling or um, hitting X symmetry or anything like that. And then we'll go out of transparency mode. I'm going to go down here to topology and then select topology. And I can select that Z mesh result. And then we'll go over here and we'll choose, uh, I like to do a little matte cap pearl, drop this down. Uh, also in your render, sometimes going into a preview shadow, starting off deep shadow, so you can see a little bit better. Then you can go through here and you can clean this up. So it's like, oh, this didn't work out great. And again, I could have done a much better job if I would have done uh, Booleans. But again, just for demo purposes here, um, you want to make sure edit topology, density, not image down, and then you can go through here and you can just kind of clean this up. And this is all just done in ZBrush. So if you don't like retopologizing in ZBrush, then don't. No one's forcing you to do topology in ZBrush. But I like to do it just really quick in ZBrush. And then I'm ready to take this out. Um, I can hit A for adaptive skin. Again, you can go to go into adaptive skin. Dynamic resolution down to zero. Density down to one. Make adaptive skin. And then um, that's just going to shoot out here. If you want to, you can append that back on. So here's your skin Z sphere. And we'll go ahead and put this back up if you want to see this a little better. We'll go into um, skin shader. There we go. So there's our new mesh. And then we can export this. And then we can clean, continue to clean this up uh, in your external program. Um, and then in here, um, and this is, this is kind of some of the fun part too, you can go into the UV toolkit and you go in here and you can say, you know what, I want to do a uh, planar uh, projection. So let's go ahead and go to two sides here. We're going to panels, 
Um, we'll go down here to UV Editor, and then you can go through here and you can start making your cuts. Um, you can also start making your cuts based on just your hard edges. So if you have, if you go in here to Mesh Display, and you can say, you know what, uh, soften hard edges, and you can set it by normal angle, uh, or your texture borders, which if you're an export, you probably would want to do that. Um, but you can also go in here to Mesh Select. Um, select. Oh boy, it's been a while since I've been here. Um, 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 use constraint. <laughs> and then uh, we'll go current, and then we'll do all in next. And then we're going to say, you can do it by crease. What am I thinking? Oh, edge. I need to go into edges here. And then I can say, um, I want to do it by hard edges. And then. Uh, and go through here, and it actually just goes ahead and um, selects all my hard edges for me, so I can just slice along those hard edges, so I can say uh, close and reset. So I have a hard edge selected, and then I can do, um, was it shift X, to go ahead and cut along here, and then I can just grab these, and I can shift, and I can, uh, let's, yeah, let's unfold these. We'll go ahead and unfold these um, real quick. It'll let me process 3D error. Well, you should be able to unfold. Interesting. Let's go to layout. Uh, so you can go in here to layout. And if you're going to do layout, you can hold down shift and tap these and go in here and say, you want to preserve 3D ratios at this point until you start. Um, there we go. I'm not sure why it was being a, a pain. Let's see if we do unfold. Okay, you know what? If Maya wants to be in a bad state, Maya can be in a bad state because you know what I want to do? I can just take this right in the head. So I can go in here to UV Layout, Info, Run. And then I can just say, I'm going to load options, edit. And no fair making fun of this interface. It works. Uh, poly edit. I'm going to send my mesh over. And so I've already sliced this mesh up. So now I can just, whoops. Sorry, forced to have it. So I just very quickly go in here and say, you know what, let's do shift flatten. Let's just do a real quick flatten on all these. And I can just do a real quick pack. And then um, this is really cool. Uh, in fact, before I even did this, um, I could have done a uh, bound symmetry. Uh, some of these things are uh, flips. So I can just go through here and kind of flip some of these. I wonder if that was throwing Maya off or whatever. Um, anyway. Um, Really cool stuff to do. I can also go through here. I can like cut this, and I can hit R for rectangular. Oops. And I can just hit F to flatten. Um, and if I wanted to make anything from straight line, like if I had uh, something cut that I wanted to stack, I can just go through here and like cut all this and flatten. In fact, I can do um, Shift D if I want to drop these. And I can do Shift D. And I can just go through here and cut this however I want. So if I want to like cut along here, I can just go through and just very quickly kind of cut. And then oh, symmetry. If I wanted to find symmetry on here, display, nope, edit, symmetry find, just right in the middle here, hit enter, I think, find here, spacebar, there we go, hit spacebar, uh, and then I can have a symmetrical object, so now again, I, as I'm cutting over here, it'll cut on the other side, so just really quickly, and you can um, paint on here as well, we'll go ahead and drop this, drop this. And then let me go ahead and flatten this out. And if you had anything you wanted uh, down the middle uh, that you wanted to flatten, like through here, if this was going to be stacked or something like that, you can go in here to step, snack, step, snack, step, stack, uh, S, 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 and then they'll go ahead and pin these across a straight line, then control drag these out. And then you can go ahead and hit F. And then, uh, yeah, and this one, you can hit S to go into century. A lot of cool stuff you can do in here, and then we'll go ahead and turn this off. Anyway, long story short, we can do a quick pack, and then we can go over here, and we can say send, and we'll go back into Maya. And now, now can I, why was it being weird? There we go, now it unfolds, that's fine. I can say unfold, you can optimize, um, like this kind of stuff too. You can go in here and you can like straighten uh, UVs, border shell, all that good stuff. So you still have a lot of that same functionality. Um, not sure what the point of all that was. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll get far and long enough and I'll just forget what I was talking about. Or if I was answering a question or something. Or if I just... Uh, 
perspective versus camera perspective. Should I stick with the old system or the camera since the camera doesn't align to object? Um, yeah, so that kind of thing, if you're matching, uh, this is something we went over in the live stream as well. If you're matching uh, something, oh yeah, UV had this layout, sorry. And you know what? I stopped recording to see if that was part of the streaming, and now I'm nervous. I hope all of this goes on. Now I'm now I'm just nervous. Uh, I never had problems with streaming before, and of course now just today. Uh, so anyway, uh, what he's talking about is you go in here to perspective, and if you go into draw here, you're going to have uh, here's the universal camera. It's a little bit different than ZBrush's native camera. However, if you have perspective on and you start, uh, sorry. Accidentally inserted an edge loop on a very high resolution mesh there. Um, let's go to standard rush so I get a little safer. So as I go away from that midline, you're going to see, so here I am in the middle with perspective on, it looks fine. And then as I go over here, it's going to start skewing. Uh, you can mitigate that a little bit by going in here and turning off universal perspective camera, and that'll give you access to a line to object. So now it'll be perspective front face no matter where you are, but you lose out on having the physically correct camera uh, stuff in there, I think. Line to object on, yeah, it still skews. So, you know, it's either one or the other, I think. I don't think you can do both. Is there a way to project or transfer poly groups from one mesh to another, say, onto a zero meshed mesh? Uh, transfer poly groups. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can transfer color. So, for example, oh, here's another thing. So, if you wanted to do an auto game res, and I'm not going to have enough time to do auto game res, if I had Houdini, we could murder it in Houdini, it'd be awesome. Um, in ZBrush, it's a little bit stale to what, sit there and watch. It's doable if you go on my YouTube channel um, or a modern station page. Either one, um, like this one, set by weapon process, we go with all the way through. I think we use ZBrush for most of these and just kind of decimate it down and bake our maps and throw it in Painter. So even this it's super crappy game res, but I mean, if you're just doing proof of concept and you want to do a quick render, um, like this, Let's see if we go through here. And even here, I take it to iRay. Um, uh, yeah, so even is a total garbage mesh, but uh, we were able to go through here and just do quick UVs, uh, seams, decimated game res, and bake our maps, and it still it looks great. It, would it stand up to like the scrutiny of the technical director while putting stuff in engine? Probably not. Um, but for just quick proof of concept, like, and the other thing too is you got to remember this is a concept sculpt. This took me um, to do the to do this one to do the gorilla skull took me probably three hours to kind of go through and kind of match my reference. And it's not completely finished, but it's close enough. And then it took me kind of the rest of the day to do this. Uh, I would say, you know what, I'd probably give myself uh, I guess a working day to do this, but if I was really firing out cylinders and matching something, uh, we're talking probably another three hours. So in one day, you can make a pretty decent gorilla skull and then just uh, apinator it up uh, fairly quickly. And But it's still not like, well, do you want to like go in and make, if I was to make this all sub-D meshes and cut in all these little intricate things, one thing, uh, like we talked about before, these little intricate things I'd probably just put into the texture. Unless you unless you were going super IMAX and the camera was going to, like, even then you could do displacement maps, I suppose. Um, but even, like, getting all this stuff to resolve correctly and smooth, uh, I could definitely do it. It's all, all the information's there. Um, so I go through here and I can just say, like, I split this out and I could just rebuild this as a sub-D mesh. Would it take me forever and would it be worth it? I mean, that's kind of up to you to decide. For me, as a concept mesh, just to kind of get proof of concept and go in and do beautiful renders for approvals, not at all. And you saw how fast it was to kind of go through and just texture it up and throw it in an IRA. And, um, you know, that could just be my approval render. Um, and it only took me a day to do. And it took me, you know, like I said, you take texture this and render it in 10 minutes. So, you know, pick and choose your battles. Uh, and then once it's approved, then you can go in and be like, well, okay, now the camera is going to be right here. So let's go ahead and rebuild this what I need in as a study surface and make it beautifully subdivided and stuff. Yeah, the <laughs> the UV is super odd, but man, I gotta tell you, I, I for even just quick and dirty uh, UVs, I like to use this program. Let's go ahead and um, can I do symmetry off? Um, oh yeah, so with symmetry find. Let's do this again. So we can't find symmetry, but um, sometimes it's useful. You know what? Let's just do this. Um, we'll go back through here. Sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. 
um, we'll get back in Painter in a second. So I can go through here and I can say, um, let's just delete half because we you know what? I want a UV, oh, that was a bad selection. I want a UV just half and then have it uh, stacked over on top of each other. So if I do this, um, now we can just send this over so we can send this back here. And since we did edit, I'll go ahead and have our UVs. I mean, this is basically our UVs sitting here. Again, we can just repack these. I'll go seven. These, these, these lines right here, right down the middle of the face, are already straight. But if you're in here, we do uh, shift D and we just, oops, shift D, shift D. Go through here, uh, and another cool thing too is you can go through here. You can like paint. So if you want to do a really quick paint in here and drop. Um, a caveat to that, and the version I'm using right now, uh, I forget where it is. Ooh, sorry. <sighs> is it under edit? No, display. I'm trying to remember. There's um, if you hit G, it's gonna be this is a uh, kind of group paintings, you can do GU and stuff like that. There's a way where you can um, set it to legacy, because as I was painting through, I was noticing it was going all the way through the object, even though you can tell it not to go through the object, so I had to go back to legacy. But anyway, we can go through here and we can just paint these and drop them. We can do Shift C, and we can go through here, and we can grab all these. And if I want to, I can pop this out, I can move it along. Um, I can go through here and just pop this out, and I can go in here and kind of mess around with it. Um, for example, and then um, again, I can do I can do G and kind of paint this bottom part out of here, and then uh, D to drop, and then Shift C, and then we'll do uh, C C to keep all those, and then Shift W to get rid of these, and then we can um, go ahead and pop this out. And it's like, you know what? I want to cut this where you're not going to be able to see it that well. Enter, drop, drop, one, F, F, and then we can do Shift F if you want to pelt, flatten. And then if you want, you can even in here, you go through and be like, you know what, that's not going to uh, be great. So I'm going to C, C, enter, and then flatten this. Actually, I need to cut along here. And flatten this one out. Um, even stuff like this, you can probably hit R, and it'll go ahead and pin it for you. Um, rectangular it out. Um, another cool thing, too, oh, I don't have my, yeah, we'll skip that. But anyway, yeah, so there's, there's that. And then along a midline here, if um, you can also do G facing 180, so shift F, not too much. G U, G small F, uh, I guess that did okay. And G grow, grow that out a little bit. And then let's go through really quickly. I mean, you, I guess you could have just, I was getting the painting, so. If you're going to keep talking about it, but of course you can just cut right along that one line there. So let's say, again, just being super quick and dirty, and then shift G. Yeah, it doesn't want to unpaint. Okay, you know what we'll do? Here, here, enter. And then I'm just going to drop this one. So I'm going to hit drop here. And the whole point of this is like if I wanted to uh, mirror this overlay, oh, I need to fix that geometry. Uh, I can go in here to snap stack, snap stack, snap stack. S, 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 and then move these over, and then F, and then I'll go straighten it out. And then when I send it back, and we go into our UVs panel, panel UV editor, select it. Um, and then what I want to do, I can go in here, I can do like mirror, hold down shift, and then just mirror this. Um, Cross and now everything is going to be stacked. Um, so now I have better pixel density because the UVs are stacked, but then I'm going to lose a little bit of uh, ability to kind of paint. Like if I paint on this side, it's going to mirror it on that side no matter what, even if I have symmetry off um, because the UVs are stacked. So for instance, I can grab um, these UVs. Let's grab these UVs here. So these ones, uh, if I want to, if I'm going to be doing a baking, I'm going to want to go in here to UV Toolkit and transform this over to the left. Speaking of, if you're doing uh, UDEMs, so I have a UDEM version in here. Or I thought I did unstacked UDEMs. You know what? This is fine. So if you wanted to like be like put these uh, teeth in their own UDEMs, uh, same process. You can just do uh, control drag to UV. Oops. Go in here. I guess component mode. Hold on. T. Come on. 
and then uh, I can just transform. You put this move to one, and then it'll just move over one. Um, if you're like, well, how do I know what UDIM that is? I mean, you can, uh, it, it's pretty. Uh, you have I have tiles showing. So basically, uh, one zero zero one two through ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 18, 19, 20. If you want to see those, uh, you can go into View, Grid. And right now we have um, Tile Lines, so that's the different UDIM tiles. You can also do Tile Labels. And then there's your UDIM Tiles, and then you can go through here and say, here's 1001, 2, 3, 4. And I think mostly, most of the UDIM stuff I've seen, they ignore these negative quadrants. They just stay in this positive quadrant and go basically 1 through 10, 11 through 20, 21 through 30. And then they can just set your object up through UMs like that. Um, sorry, let me get cut back up here. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's super hockey dependent. Uh, it actually, um, it's pretty quick. I, I like it. I enjoy it. Of course, I'm biased because I'm comfortable with it. Your mileage may vary. Uh, how many years of experience you have in the industry? Uh, I graduated. I went, got my associate's degree in 99 to 01 at Texas State Technical College in Waco, Texas. And then Ringling was like 99, 2000, 01 to 05. And then I went and worked at Tiburon, I think, in 05. So 05, 2005, 2015, so 14 years. Workflow videos inside of this movie. Very helpful. Excellent. Cool. I'll have some more uh, Houdini stuff for you soon. Super serious. Super Thank you. Yes, excellent. I'm glad those videos are coming out. Um, does Substance Standard do good UV, auto UVs out? Let's check it out. Good point. Go ahead and kill Maya. And you know what? I guess we don't need UV layout anymore either. It's fun. But let's talk a little bit more about Painter. And also, let's talk a little bit more about um, performance. Because that's uh, there's been some severe increases. I'm gonna go in here to new. Um, I'm trying to think what the best thing to kind of let's go in here to resurface. We're gonna do bait. We're gonna do stack bait. Stack bait. So I can show you a little bit of a different technique. Um, so this one, uh, I have a bake all file. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna hit bake all for you guys. If you're downloading, let me go ahead and shoot that back up while we're all watching. Um, let me go to my video folder here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Share. If you want to texture this thing, please do. And then shoot it back at me. Uh, hashtag NVIDIARTX and then hashtag Substance3D. And then um, at have mic. And you can uh, possibly get, if you win, one of two licenses for Substance, uh, substance Painter for a year. Anyway, so we've got, uh, I've selected the all low, so we can hit OK. And this one is going to have texture sets over here, uh, but it's only half because I'm only going to be baking half and then um, stacking it or flipping it over on the other side. But I can still do that in Substance Painter, no problemo. So we're going to go in here to the texture settings and we're going to scroll down. We're going to bake mesh maps. And if we go down here, I'm going to do 2048 and we're going to bake all these maps. And I'm going to go to my high res. Uh, you can bring in all of your high res all at the same time. You see I have a skull high and you can still do namespace to your texture settings, but I'm gonna do it uh, individually. So I'm gonna do, um, uh, do I have that? Bake stack, oh, you know, I guess I moved them. Sorry, uh, we're gonna do ape skull high and we'll go ahead and bake the skull first. Um, and we're in eyes right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cancel out of that. We're gonna go to the skull here and we're gonna bake these one by one. Uh, again, you can bake them all. You're going to see bake all texture sets down here. You can bring in all of your ZBrush. As long as the names are correct, um, you're going to notice in my my file, they're underscore low, and then my high res, they're underscore high. So if your namespaces are correct, and by default, it's underscore high, underscore low. You can, of course, change that to whatever you want. Um, you can tell it, okay, for my normal map, I want you to only match by mesh name, and that's going to allow you to get very clean normal map bakes without having any uh, transfer errors or a projection errors, I should say. And then over in your um, ambient occlusion, you can tell it, you know what, always bake. Because if I'm not going to be animating any of these, then I do want ambient occlusion baked between objects. But if you do, are going to be animating these things, everything, um, you can go in here and say only same mesh name. So it's kind of up to you how you want to break up. <clears throat> but anyway, so we have our skull mat in here. We have all of these. And we're going to go ahead and bake some maps. So we're going to go to, uh, again, you can bake all texture sets. In this case, we're just going to be baking the skull mat texture. So we're going to bake skull mesh maps. And... Um, why I was quick. Uh, that didn't 
skull map here, texture stuff. Oh, I, did I load the high resin? Hold on. Big mesh maps. I didn't load high resin. Duh. Um, in this case, it's going to be um, skull high and then uh, 2048. And uh, you can actually go see here, it says use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. You can bake to another mesh if you just want to grab quick curvature AO. Uh, and we can say bake skull mesh maps. And then I'm going to go down here. There's some documentation we can talk about here. Let me load that up. Some of it's, uh, I think, a little bit contradictory, but we'll, we'll, we'll sort it out. And I think, honestly, I think it's just some stuff hasn't been updated. So it's going through and it's going to be baking. Now, there are some mesh maps that um, aren't uh, GPU ray traced enhanced, and you'll, you'll be able to tell the difference for sure. Um, so, for example, um, the things that are going to be using the optics um, cores to bake your maps, maps faster are going to be your enemy occlusion, your bent normals, your curvature, your position, your thickness, and your roll space normal. So while it's going through here and uh, baking these mesh maps, uh, basically your uh, normal map and then your uh, material ID, I think, it's transferring that information. That's going to be a little more CPU bound, but you're going to notice a huge increase in performance as soon as it starts hitting the other ones. Um, make sure we're still rocking and rolling here. Yeah, and the reason why... <laughs> Is again, you know, my boost clock will kick in, so it's still a fast core that's being used, but it's only, it's not distributing that workload. It's kind of just pinging uh, very few of my cores here. So again, it's that trade-off of, well, it's not really, this this process isn't really optimized for using a bunch of processors, so would that mean I would only go and buy a processor that only has this capability? No, because the only thing I do is not just bake normal maps and subspanner. You know, I do a lot more stuff, so... Um, and again, it's still a fast core. So there's the normal map baked, and then boom, and then this one uh, might take a little bit longer, but as soon as it hits ambient occlusion, curvature, position, and thickness, it's going to go bing. Uh, you'll see how fast it is. In fact, I think somewhere in here, there was like 900% increase. Something ridiculous. Now, the, to be clear, though, uh, in order to get this speed boost you're going to see in here, you're going to have to have uh, technical requirements. Uh, for the supported GPUs, uh, the ones that have the ray tracing for baking is going to be, um, uh, you need optics, and that's going to be your NVIDIA um, RTX cards. In fact, let's open up our GPU here, and we'll put this onto here. We'll see if this kicks in. So again, and again, uh, I'm baking the skull, which is going to be the heaviest thing. It's actually about 10 million polygons. Um, so yeah, it takes it takes a minute. But um, what else can we talk about here? Let's see, cover. Doo -doo -doo. I'm trying. I'm going through my notes here to make sure. Yeah, sort of scattering. Oh, paintbrushes. Those have been updated too. So we talked about how you can drag and drop. AVR files right in the Substance Painter and have Photoshop brushes to paint with. Um, there's a new roller brush we can talk about. There's also a really cool uh, oil painting filter uh, that we can check out. As soon as this is up and rolling. Yeah. Hit that one core. There we go. Ambient occlusion, done. Curvature, done. Map position, done. Thickness, done. So pretty quick. And then if you want to see these maps again, you just go um, into your E for your bake maps. And uh, you can see those maps there. And also, uh, it, we were baking this 24 you can bake it 4096, so this is just for demonstration purposes. Um, now, here's the thing. Well, let's just go ahead and do this. We'll go back to eyes. This will just take a second. These are much, much smaller. Uh, and in fact, the eyes we can bake even lower, but I think this is fine. Um, let's go ahead and kill this, and we'll just very quickly... Um, Eyes mesh maps. Normal, roll space normal, med ID, ambient occlusion, curvature, position, thickness. Yay. And like I said before, this skull was not optimized at all. Uh, in fact, if you're going to be exporting out of ZBrush, it might behoove you on your FAX export, go ahead and hit triangulate. Um, there is a caveat in some of these where it's like, in order to do the process, uh, I think it puts an ASBIN file in there that'll triangulate the mesh so it loads in faster on uh, iterative bakes. Uh, iris, we don't need to bake, and then teeth will just be another ass one. Um, teeth here, bake them. Done, 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 done. Done, done. Now, uh, we got everything baked. 
uh, but it's not uh, my entire mesh. So how do I get my entire mesh in there? Let's hit M on door. Uh, so how do I get my entire mesh in there? Basically, I have another one. This is where we go back in here to um, edit project configuration, and then I can just load up a file with everything mirrored that I need to have mirrored, but the UV stacked. I can just select it. Here's my skull all. And then I'll go ahead and bring everything else back. And like I said before, it's going to go ahead and stack them. It's got the UVs on the other side. However, um, on things that are mirrored, if I put it in here, um, control alt click, right click, layers, and then just start painting on here, uh, it's going to be mirrored. Even though I don't have the symmetry line turned on, uh, it's, it's mirrored. Uh, there is a new roller brush in here. So let's go ahead and do, do a fill layer. Nice blue fill layer add black mask um, and then if you do a let's just, I'm just gonna go all you can do brushes search but paint roller warning so you can go through here and then you've got uh, warning on here let's see if I can see full preview there we go uh, so here's you can see as you go around it goes ahead and follows the brush so that's super useful uh, you can do arrows so like the arrow will follow the brush around now super neat and of course what's this one ha, nice um click it there we go of course we're going to do warning we probably want to do something more like um let's do yellow a little amber warning uh so yeah there's the roller brush and there's another one too i'm going to go here to file no i'm not going to go to new Let's go in here to file, um, open sample, and there's a, you can open up any of the like meat mat or the preview sphere, Jade Toad, you can go in here and you can texture up the things. I'm going to do tiling material, and this is where you can kind of test tiling material. It actually has displacement turned on. I don't need any of that. I'm going to delete it, and let's go ahead and grab, let's see if I have anything that'll make a good oil painting. Yeah, this will be good. So um, here's the ZBrush 2020 stuff. If you need to catch up on ZBrush, just two live streams. Uh, again, I'm going to have that playlist as soon as I sit down and um, I'm not super lazy. So I'm going to take this image right here. We're going to go ahead and download it. And then go to my folder here. And I'm just going to load this right into my uh, here. And I'm just going to say my current session. And I'm going to say it's a texture. And then I can import it. And then here's my texture here. And then in my layers here, we're going to make a new fill layer. And I can just drag this right onto base color. Um, let's go to 2D only. There we go. So we have this uh, little guy on here. And now I can go into, there's a Max FX oil painting filter. Let's drop that on there. And boom. You ever wanted to be a concept artist who does nice mood painting painterly stuff? Well, guess what? You are with a simple drag and drop. And then you can take this and uh, there's effect intensity you can go through here. Uh, and I wonder, oh, you can also swap this out. So if we have something else that would be cool. Let's see if we can go here. Anything here? If you want to see the making of this mech, that's my, uh, I did a ZBrush Summit presentation. This one's already kind of got it. You can actually do uh, post filters in ZBrush that I kind of look to. Um, ZBrush Summit 2018, you can see um, up here, here's nine, six videos after I got home. And we went over the little specs, but here's my presentation uh, I did at ZBrush Summit. Um, kind of walk you through a little bit of my workflow and methodology. And um, it was just a little sizzle, sizzle video in here. Uh, we did uh, a couple guys on my team uh, did a little cool... <laughs> A little cool thing here. That's always a cool part. I like the part. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so there's that. Uh, but as far as, here we go. You know, this will work. So go ahead and dump that in here. And then we'll go ahead and say you can come in here as a texture as well. And current session. And then we can just uh, overwrite this. There we go. So now we've got a cool Earthworm Jim um, oops. oil painting. Sorry, let me get caught back up. Um, headline there at the bottom of my screen, submit by 2020, uh, 106 2020. So that is submit by, did I mess that up? 13. <laughs> that should be 13. Oh! 
next Monday. I was looking at my calendar, and, uh, man, see, when you wake up early, this is the kind of stuff that, um, just, just got to shake my head. Back in Photoshop, luckily it's easy to fix. So one thirteen Monday. Yes, submit it by one thirty Monday, and then Tuesday I'll do another live stream, and we can um, check them out and have a lot of fun with that. Um, did I seriously not save? Amateur hour. Sorry about that. But we got it done quick. File. Save as. PNG. Overlay. Yes, please. Thank you. Sorry, I'm dumb. Yeah, next Monday, deadline, and then Tuesday on the live stream, I'll, I'll uh, see who the winner is. Uh, if you bake maps in 2K, can you still up the 4K afterwards and get better quality, or can you only go as high as your initial bake to maintain that quality? I think... I don't think... So, when you bake your maps, your mesh maps, that's going to be the resolution you baked them at. However, when you're painting, that's a different story. Let's go ahead and say... Um, opens up. So, I'll give you an example. Let's talk about this. 3D only. Uh, and again, we'll go to that skull mat here, and we'll say... Let me put another fill layer on here, and I put a fill layer on top of that, and temporarily we're going to turn our shadows off. Okay, so uh, on this fill layer, we want to do, I'm just digging this this blue color here, and then right click, add a black mask. So while we're painting, you can actually go, if you're kind of chugging in here, and, and that's the other thing too, is with, this is very graphics card intensive as well, so you're going to want a decent graphics card so you get nice, smooth uh, viewport rotation and better brush uh, handling. Uh, in here, so again, pick and choose your components, but if you do a lot of painter work, um, a good GPU is not going to hurt you. So now in here, the skull material, uh, we have here, we have the layers, and we got a black mask, and I can go through here in my texture settings, and you can say, you know what, while I'm texturing, I just want to see a 512 version of my mesh. I just want to get an idea, and you can feel free to texture uh, all you want. So we go in here to texture, we have this, we can go to our alphas, and we can start stamping alphas. You can actually do text in here as well. Um, like this font, alpha's in here. Uh, you can go through here and you can, um, like this is, a, oh man, does, does Photoshop have this where you can control right, uh, or sorry, left mouse button click? And actually, if you're just on your tablet, you just push down on the mesh and do this. This is so freaking useful. Um, I wanted to say in Photoshop they didn't have this ability. It's like a total pain to go over here and change your rotation and then come back. I could be wrong. Um, but anyway, you can go through here, and if you don't want to say substance, you can tell it whatever you want. You can say, whatever you'd like, and then we're going to have to go down here to size, and we'll change that down so it kind of fits on here. And then, uh, let's see if there's anything else in here we need to worry about. Alignment, position, size, advanced blending. That's, that's where you go into the... Yeah, normal light. We talked about that earlier. Yeah, it looks fine. So um, you're going to see, okay, I'm, I'm putting it on here, but boy, it's super low quality. So your bake maps are going to be what resolution you baked them at. However, in your texture settings, when you go through here and you're just painting, um, here it is at 2048, and here it is at 4096. It'll update um, to whatever... It, it, whatever your as long as your alpha is nice and sharp, it'll go ahead and paint uh, that resolution. So again, I generally tend to just paint at 2048, but you can certainly go in here and paint at 2046, no problem. Uh, and of course, we have flexibility in here, so it's like, you know what? I want this to kind of be stamped in a little bit, and I don't really like that color, so I'm going to change this to something like that. And uh, again, it's just going to be th that one when you go to export, like say I'm at 2048, and I'm working, I was like, okay, this is fine. Uh, but I do want to export this at 4096. That doesn't mean you have to work in 4096. You can work in 2048. And then when you go here to File, Export, Textures, you can say, okay, in the skull, make this 4096 when you export, and it will go through and give you the up res version. It'll give you that drop, it'll drop it down, up res everything, and then export it.
So you can work at 2048, and then when you go to export, it will up res. However, it's not going to up res your baked maps. Your baked maps is what you baked it at. So there's no magic there, but you can go into mesh baked maps with your skill selected and be like, oh, you know what? I'm going to bake those mesh maps at 396. And that's what I did for you guys when I, um, the file you download, you're going to notice the skull's 4096, and then the eyeballs, maybe 2048, the teeth might be 1025, I forget. Um, but you should have plenty of resolution on there to play around, have some fun. Uh, submit the renders to me. Uh, just tweet them at me. And then uh, put hashtag Substance3 and NVIDIA RTX so that they can uh, see your cool skulls too. And uh, yeah, I think it'll be fun. It should be fun. And that's the whole point of this too, is like going in here and kind of playing around. You can see how quick and easy it is. Even if you go in here and you want to use smart materials and you want to go into uh, Substance Source or Substance Share, uh, like I, I totally cheated. I keep calling it cheating. It's not cheating. It's... It is what it is, man. It's production. Um, but go in here and you can grab those, or you can just start from scratch. That's also fun, too. Or you can mix and match. Like, it's like, you know what? I want a nice metal base layer, but on top of that, I want, like, a painted metal. There is painted metal in here. They're still painted. Uh, they can scratch off. But we can go in here and we would say, you know what? This is going to be my painted metal. So uh, what's going to be painted is going to be... Let's go ahead and put in maybe some... Um, orange paint here and then we can go okay where do I want my paint to actually go so this is where we can go um you can do mass with color selection and you can just kind of pick that face paint where you want it to go and if you have anything that's not vert welded oops uh, if you have uh, looks like I messed up there uh, when I was going through and assigning materials I think I went back around color wheel this is easy enough to fix just go in here to um, add a paint layer and then you can even go in here to select mesh and choose this object one uh, make it black and then you just click on that object and then if it's not vert welded it'll just fill it with black so you can do that uh, so now it's painted black you can hold down you can have hold down alt to tap and you'll see this is ooh, that's kind of cool look hmm hmm maybe kind of like a little punisher skull that might be neat um let me hit m go back to our material and then so now we have our face here, oh yeah, we're doing painted. So now this is painted and it's kind of factory fresh. So if I go back into my brush, you're like, well, okay. So there's a couple things you can do. You can add another paint layer if you want and you can go in here to your brushes and you can say, um, let's go scratch. You can go in here with scratches and you can just kind of start manually painting in black, uh, assuming your paint is black. Um, you can go through here and start scra scraping out um, your scratches. Like you can get like some wool scratches and you can manually go through and just kind of start like I said scratching uh, the surface but uh, usually what I'll end up doing is I'm going to add a generator uh, you can do two things well it's more than two things you can do a lot of stuff but I'm going to go into generate first and do um, metal edgeware and that'll go through and uh, now it's kind of doing the opposite it's giving me edgeware in the middle and leaving my edges for my curvature map alone that's easy enough to fix go in here to invert and now you're just getting scratches along those edges so you can kind of dial in the wear level if you just want a little bit of scratch you want a lot of scratch uh, and if you want a little bit of scratch plus a lot of grunge you can go through here and add grunge and you can add custom grunge i believe in here as well uh, and these are all the maps now here's custom grunge if you want to load in some custom grunge um, so it's using these maps, like this curvature map that we talked about earlier. It's using that curvature map to determine where your edges are. And then it's going to mask. If we hold an alt and tap, you can see this is where the mask is going with that, um, with this particular generator. Now, there are things called smart masks. You can go in here. And for example, if we just do, let's go add a black mask. So this is going to cover, this is going to be orange everywhere. Uh, well, let's do this. Well, let's do this. Um, let's go over here to... Uh, edge rust, dust dirty. Is there an edge? Edge scratches. We can drag this right onto the mask, and that'll give me uh, edge scratches. And then one more time. Um, so we have a sharpen. And this is kind of like a smart. It's it, it'll have a bunch of stuff over here. So you go to metal edge wear is the base of it, and you can go through here and be like, oh, you know what? I do want to invert this. And then on top of that, it has a sharpen filter. So it has uh, settings kind of built in, and every single one of these is going to have a bunch of things stacked in here that are going to control how that mask works. Um, a lot of really cool stuff you can do in here. What was I talking about? So we were painting a oh, metal edge, and you can also do um, you can do a little bit of both. Like I like to do just everything kind of procedural. Um, let's do uh, curvature weight. 
and then where contrast like a little bit more contrast in my winter um and all another thing you can do if if you were scratching down to this base metal this t800 metal underneath um, you can actually have this paint have a little bit of height as well you can just go through here this gets can kind of get a little bit much so you really want to be use it sparingly but you can put a little bit of height on that so it actually that paint looks like it's sitting right on top of that surface um yeah painted edge scratches oh oh here's another thing so if i like okay i got my edge scratches here on this mask but oh man i wish i had done it just to that little faceplate here you can still do that um, all you got to do is go in here to uh, mask with color selection um oh i don't want to kill it can i do i don't want to do, i just want to do color selection duh um so i can do add color selection so i want to leave my mask alone but i want to add a color selection pick this one and um now if I alt tap this one, it's going to be like, oh, I'm doing all this edge wear and this mask. So what I can do is I can drag this color selection down below and make this metal edge wear multiply. And now it's just going to be applied to this area. So this is my color selection. And then actually on top of this one, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add a paint. And then on this paint, we're going to go back in here and we're going to say, do the selection, black, object, fill. You can do it by UV shell and all that good stuff, but we're just going to do a fill here. Uh, so now we have the face plate, nice and masked out. I, if I alt, there it is. And then I have metal edge wear on top of this. Now, if you wanted to do that manually in the right order, or any order where you wouldn't have to kind of juggle anything, you can simply go in here and say, you know what? Um, I'm going to add a generator. And we can go in here. And you can also just like add a, go in here and do a mask editor. That gives you all all the options in the world. Um, I'm going to keep this simple. We're going to go to metal edge wear. And now, again, it's going to do a metal edge everywhere because it's just normal. It's overriding everything. But if I multiply it, the blending mode, now it's just going to do metal edge wear uh, just where that color selection is telling it to go. So, invert. Wear level down a little bit. Good to go. And, uh, yeah, totally awesome. Totally awesome. Um, and it's, do I have any textures in here? Let me do a... Um, let's see if I can grab a... Oh man, I am way over time. <laughs> I gotta go. Uh, texture however you want. Be creative. Have fun with it. Um, just one last thing before I go. I'm gonna go grab a... Um, I can grab a warning label off of here. This is just gonna be... Uh, let me save image as desktop. And then if I go to my desktop here, drag this in, and we're going to call this a texture. Sorry, I was having way too much fun today. Uh, import to current session. Uh, you can import it to your shelf. You're going to use it all the time. And then uh, I can go in here to um, let's put this on a just a regular old layer. And then we can call this decal. And then now if we go to the back here. I'm going to try to find a place, and that'll work. Uh, I'm going to go into, uh, what is this one? Sorry, it's been, I got three. So one, two is erase, three is projection. And then in this projection, I can drop in um, anything I want, and then I can go through here, and I can hold down S and rotate the thing down and scale it down. So now I can just do a little caution sticker on here. And now this is where, ooh, I can show this off too. So basically, um, texture, I'm on 2048 right now. Um, and ideally, you would go through and you would you control, drag this out. You can also hold down shift and kind of go through here like so. So we can put a little caution sticker in here, and then we'll go back into brush mode. And then I can go in here to, to erase. We'll go ahead and sharpen that up. So a little caution sticker on there. You can do a little more careful than I did. Here you see, that's ah, a little bit low res. No big deal. When you go to um, export it, um, it'll be 4096 if you choose to export this at 4096. So that's another good example. Uh, and then on here, if you go back to your brushes here, um, again, let's go to dirt. You go in here, like, you can even, you can paint in dirt, obviously, but you can also use this to kind of go through and kind of, you know, chew up the edges of this a little bit, make it look a little bit more worn. You can drop this opacity down on the base color. There you go. A little cotton decal on there. Anyway, sorry, I gotta go. <laughs> um, can I make a rust sword sharp side? That I'm not sure about. Um, I'm not sure I follow you there. But 
I'll go ahead and I'll let you guys go. I didn't realize it was so late. Um, like I said before, I'm going to edit the description with the download, download it, texture it up, tweet it at me. We'll pick two winners. Have fun with it. And um, thanks, everybody. One. And uh, I'll see you guys later.